Yeah. Prophet Noble Juali, we called him, but we, we give him a uh, we give him a double. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, the great prophet today. Somebody say ancestor John Henry Clark, master teacher, uh, master, master teacher. We honor Dr. John Henry Clark. Frederick Douglass, Ashe. Dr. Chair, we're speaking of master teachers. Dr. Chancellor Williams, Dr. Sheikh Anta Diop, uh, Sojourner Truth, Dr. John G. Jackson, let me say Ashe. The na nanny of the Maroons, we say Ashe. Somebody say Bill Cooper. Bill Cooper, a uh, white boy, uh, busted out the New World Order. They assassinated him in the middle of the night. We say Ashe. But Dr. Ben ain't dead yet. <laughs> he ain't dead yet. But we honor we, but we Dr. Ben, Egyptologist, master teacher. But we want him to keep living. Two side lay overture. We honor him, and we know that uh, he successfully fought for Haitian independence. Um, uh, a lot of white folks got murdered. Let's give him a hand. Give them two side hand. <laughs> Only one problem with Chief Trump, though, he, he wanted to be a Frenchman. He didn't understand. And he ended up because, even though he stood up and fought a war against the French, he still had, that was infected and infested as we are today with that disease of white supremacy. So he ended up being tricked and getting executed in France. Uh, but we benefit from his sacrifice. Any other answer? Khalid Muhammad. Dr. Khalid Muhammad, we got him, but we're gonna give him a double. Uh, Dr. Khalid Muhammad uh, was the man who uh, was the former Supreme Captain of the Nation of Islam, the former national representative, the former yep. national spokesperson, yep. the former national assistant. Yep. He dropped bombs, he brought the pain, he brought the funk. Um, he was condemned by Bill Clinton, by Al Gore, by the United States Senate, S-I-N, uh, by the House of Representatives, by governors, by the New York Times, city councils, Anti-Defamation League, Southern Poverty Law Center, everybody condemned Dr. Khaled Muhammad. He was assassinated, don't believe the hype. He just died, that's not true. I was with the brother, he was healthy in mind, spirit, and body. Uh, he was taken out, and unfortunately, some of those who were involved in that are being lifted up today. But you know, that's the way the devil operates. But one thing I like about white folks, Paul Masson say, no wine shall be open before it's time. And when it's time, justice will be rendered on all those that are guilty. The white hands and the black hands in the murder and the assassination of Dr. Khaled Muhammad. And I'm a better man and I'm a stronger man because of Dr. Khaled uh, Abdul Muhammad. And the work continues. Any other ancestors? Well, he's not dead yet either. Uh, Matt, but he, we, we give him my master teacher, Dr. Malachi York, prisoner of war. And we can never forget him. We can never forget Imam uh, Jamil El Amin, formerly known as H. Rap Brown. Uh, we've got Black Panthers in prison today across this country, done more time in prison than Nelson Mandela ever did. We cannot forget our prisoners of war. If we leave them behind the enemy's jail and we don't unite and go get them, then there's almost no encouragement for us to continue to struggle today. I say? I say. So we honor all our prisoners of war. Uh, Mumia Abu Jamal, prisoner of war, former Minister of Information uh, in the Black Panther Party. He's on lockdown, he's on death row. Any other ancestors? John Brown. John Brown again? Ron Brown. Ron Brown, all right. Ron Brown. Ron Brown was uh, in the boule. Ron Brown uh, helped Bill Clinton get into office, helped him win. Clinton credited him with helping him win 
and Ron Brown was under investigation. There were several investigations about the Clinton administration. Ron Brown was about to tell the truth. And Ron Brown also began to break away from the boule. And whenever you break away from the boule, which is that black, negro, treasonous, traitorous secret society based off the orders of Skull and Bones, whenever you break away, they kill you. Whitney Young used to be in the boule. He began to break out. They got rid of him. Congressman Mickey Leland was in the boule. He began to break out. They got rid of him. No offense, Dr. Martin Luther King, boule. He broke out. They offed him. And Ron Brown was breaking out from the boule and was getting ready to tell everything on Bill Clinton. And he also wanted to do some things in relation to Africa and to lift up Africa. And he ended up, his plane allegedly crashed. But Hillary Clinton was on that plane a couple days before. And I have a tape uh, that's done by a former uh, white admiral in the Navy showing Ron Brown's face with a bullet hole. Uh, so they shot him. And then they wrecked the plane. And they killed their own generals uh, to get rid of him. We give uh, recognition to Ron Brown. Any other ancestors? Mayor Young, the best mayor we ever had in this city. Mayor Young cussed white folks out in the morning. He cussed white folks out in the afternoon. He cussed them out in the afternoon. And he cussed them out in the evening. That's my type of mayor. Let's give Mayor Young a hand. I like elected officials that tell white folks to kiss their ass. Let's give Mayor Young another one. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with it at all. Any other ancestors? Carol Washington. All right, from your family, that's right. Mayor Harold Washington, the first black mayor of Chicago, scared white folks to death. He said, it's our time, it's our turn. And the white folks said, oh no, nigga, we're gonna get rid of you. And they murdered him. We give honor and we give recognition to Harold Washington. Any other ancestors? Fannie Lou Hamer, who said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And she organized and she stood up against the Democratic Party. And we need to never forget. Because a lot of us call ourselves, call ourselves well, some call ourselves Republicans. It's the Democratic Party she was fighting against. Uh, and the Democratic Party that was refusing, ready, to recognize that we give honor to Fannie Lou Hamer. Uh, lastly, I guess I'm about to turn. Thank you. Uh, I want to let you know there's a restaurant, Epicurus Restaurant, 111, Epicurus, 111 West Warren. This restaurant beat up a 65-year-old man. The employee is an elder. He's on the Council of Elders. Eben Horry Pitts, he was a member of DRUM. Remember the Revolutionary Workers League? He was a member of the Detroit Council of Elders. The Metro Times honored him as the artist of the year. He's traveled around the community. Others, Cornelius Pitts, all this elder wanted was to use the bathroom. And the Arabs, Bust opened the door, tore the door off the hinges, grabbed him, beat him, pounced on him, and threw him out into the street. So I want to ask you not to support that restaurant. If you hear me on air, how many of y'all watch the show on 33? Listen to the show. Well, that's good. That's a lot. I need you to answer the call. When we put out the call to close these bastards down, we can't do it alone. Amen? I, 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 talk back to me, amen? amen? We need your help. Merchants should be operating our community that one, don't look like us, don't contribute to the community, don't participate in the community. Our bloodsuckers spit on us, shoot us down, beat up old men, beat up our women, date our daughters. They need to be ran out the community. So when you're watching my show, don't just let me be talking to myself Please respond to the call. Oh, I say, I say, everybody feel me? All right. And Romans Mark 111 
West Warren, 111 West Warren between Woodward and Woodrow Wilson. Lastly, brother mentioned Roman's Market. Uh, that's that filthy, nasty market. Thousands of pounds of rotten meat. The entire East Side community over there got sick. Uh, we went in there with Councilwoman Joanne Watson. We had a representative of the mayor. Um, and we took the deputy director of the health department in there with us. Um, and the health department, the Michigan Department of Agriculture, sees no problem with this, I'm just being, with this place being open. We told him, throw out all your meat or we're closing your wicket behind down. He threw out all his meat. We're working with him. He's fired his butcher crew. He's hiring a new butcher crew with a bu head butcher that looks like us. I'm going to personally train them. You can give God a hand clap. That's a good thing. <laughs> I'm going to personally work and make sure that he stays open in the right way. Otherwise, we'll close him down. So when, we when I come back to you later, we're going to do a little love offer, and we're going to ask for your support so that we can continue to do these things that we're doing in the community. I say, thank you. Oh, and I want to recognize Reverend Murray, our elected school board member, the great Reverend Murray. Thank you, community. He marches and all that. We give Reverend Murray honor. And he was elected on an African center plank, not a Euro center plank. Right on, Reverend Murray. Right on. Website, you can reach my program every Friday night from 9 to 10 p.m. And my show is called Civil Alert. Civil Alert. It's C I B I L A L E R T W O R L D. World.com. And you can listen to that program every week. I know there's a couple brothers that's insisted that's here that listens to the program. I just met him when I was coming in. And um, 
You can call her with any kind of questions you have, brother. Time could be there uh, most of the time. Sister Rise is there when she can make it, and brother Abdul. We have a host of uh, co hosts that comes on. Yes, the website is civil, C I V I L, alert, A L E R T, at world.com. Civil alert world.com. And actually, everything is actually world.com. Yes. Yeah. Similarworld.com. And all my um, shows are actually archived also. So you can go back and listen to them. I just had Dr. Savi on my program about a week ago. So all the shows can be actually archived. And can anybody, everybody can hear me in the back? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Too much bass. Can you hear me now? How about now? How about now, boo? No? Can you hear me now? Yeah. No? Wow. All right. I'm going to turn it one more time. Can you hear? All right. But anyway, what I do in my radio program, we touch on um, many, many topics. It can be from extending from history to law to um, everyday, you know, everyday things around the way. It could be about killing um, police terrorism because it's not brutality. It's police terrorism. We need to correct the languages, and um, I believe we're going to have it, a forum. Todd is going to touch on that, but we're going to have it, um, an open forum because you can ask us questions on this and what we're doing in Philly. And um, Abdul is talking about some loud up a little bit loud. Okay, how about that, Abdul? All right, thank you very much, bro. I'm, <laughs> um, what we do, like I said, we have to understand languages and um, understanding that when one get killed, also by a police officer, is not police brutality. Brutality is something totally different than police terrorism, when you take a life. But we touch on these topics also, we touch on health. You can call up with any question that you may have, and I'm challenging things at the program, the station right now that I'm here, because a lot of people that's there, we have attorneys, we have um, politicians that do that don't agree with what I'm doing. So there's a battle even in between us at the station, from what we're talking about. But basically what we want to talk about Tonight, Brother Tom is going to take it there. I just want to give y'all the information. I do also lectures, and they're on the table over there. And the Black Star newspaper, please support this brother. Because this brother, and you won't find another paper in Philly, or I don't know where else, like this paper, the Black Star. And this brother is um, Henry D. Bernardo. And I wrote an article in this paper, and we're going to constantly get this paper also out to Detroit, Michigan. Because it need to be out here also. It's called the Black Star, and I'll give out that information. Um, at the end of the, the lecture, when we finish. But I don't want to take up too much time. Um, I want to bring my brother on, Brother Taj Tariq Bay. We have our, uh, what's this? Oh, yeah. What is Sister Roz? Can you come on up here for a minute? Come on up here, Sister Roz. Everybody, can you give Sister Roz a round of applause? This sister here, I have a newspaper. This sister here, man, she works her behind off. I'm going to tell you, she works her behind off. Yes, she do. And she pushes me. This is like my big sister also. And when I did my newspaper, if it wasn't for that brother back there, this brother here, and this sister, doing my, it wouldn't have been done. But they're, they're pushing me. I'm more, I'm more like low key. I'm behind the mic with other things. So I want y'all to give her a minute so she can explain and let y'all tell who she is. Oh, she has something to do. Okay, see you later. Yeah, your energy. Your energy, Ross. I'll be with your little brother. <laughs> but where's the hostess that she is? The bay? Where's she going? Well, I want to turn the mic over actually to Brother Todd Terry Bay, the actually the guest of this evening. But any questions we'll be having the floor open to anybody. And you can contact me also through my website, or you can con email me at civilalertworld at yahoo.com. That's again, that's civilalertworld.com. 
at yahoo.com. You can contact me, I'll get back with you and um, leave your message. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Can all the sisters please stand up? That includes the babies. Brother, can you stand up with the queen? I want to give honor to Allah. This is the only divine prophet of the Ali. It's all the wonderful works he's brought to us. And Honorable Marcus Garvey, who brought government principles back to us. And we need to study them together to understand why you're here and what you're doing. Understand that there's an assumption with many people that they look at the different representatives of our nation and separate them. You must understand them together. The work to be done to redeem you and to redeem your lost estate was brought to you. So I'm going to bring you some information on how to use it as opposed to just hearing it as hearsay or having whatever you thought you knew about it. It's not a belief system. It is the fact of your lost birthright. And I'm going to give you some documented proof on your tie to this land. So you don't have to believe anything. Beliefs are for children. First there's belief. Then there's faith. Then there's fruition. When you become that knowledge, that know. And just like little blocks that we give the children when they're babies, we teach them principles that are basic to civilization. Then we give them working tools so they can exercise that. That's Knowledge and education has always supposed to have been given to people, but wicked people in positions of power hid those three lights from you. But Noble Drawley brought that back to you. I'm going to explain some of that to you so it can be yours. You don't need to believe anything, because we're dealing with knowledge now. Queen, I want to give honor to this queen, the brother, who's the brother? All due respect for them bringing us here, but I want to make a point. Civilization on this planet called Earth was always based in the matriarchal principle of nature, the divine law of humanity, and as woman herself. And the real uncom uncomfortable truth for a lot of people is that Allah is a feminine name, and it's actually the Moabite woman, you yourself, including that queen baby in that brother's arm. He's her father, but she's really his mother. And you got to understand this thing. And if women don't get it together, we're lost. Because all we are are your sons, no matter how old we get. So whatever they told you in any kind of religion, it's been a lie. You understand? Because you're the god of this planet. And that's the real truth. And nobody gets here but through you. And so all the brothers, I want you to give honors to your mothers, your wives, your sisters, your girlfriends, and respect her, for she is a lie. And nothing comes here on this planet except through her. So let's get with it. I give honor to you all, mothers. May I speak to your family, mothers. May I speak to your families, because I'm only your son. I got two breasts, but them suckers ain't fed nothing. But that's a reminder of where I came from. And this little mark I got on my arm and under my arm is not a birthmark. The only birthmark on this planet is a navel navigating God. And it comes from my mother. And she's the only being on this planet that builds us with a planet. And it's called a placenta. So give her the highest respect. Islam. Now let's talk about, I want to also give a shout out to the grand governor of this territory, grand governor Fuqua and the work that they're doing, communicating with the, com with the community. And I'm glad to see that, because that was needed generations ago. Praise Allah that they're stepping out, because we got to fix this thing. We can no longer have people believing or wondering what this is about. We, they got to know what this is about. And to all the youth here, this is your birthright. And one of the things that we want to deal with today is for you understanding what birthright actually is. Not what somebody might have told you that you had some idea. We're going to make you understand exactly what it is so this becomes yours. Birthright is that which is yours at birth, divinely given, having nothing to do with government whatsoever. 
upon those principles and alienable rights are made and based in nature's law and nature's God. And governments are structured or built to protect those inalienable rights. Other than that, government has no existence, purpose whatsoever. And these civilization principles need to be returned to you so that you can know how to defend yourself in corrupt government. And these are the rules of civilization. It's called a covenant, an agreement, a constitution. And you better understand that they are contracts. So one of the things that our people need to understand is what a contract is, the nature of it, the spirit of it, and learn how to live in contracts because you live in contracts every day of your life. Unfortunately, that has not been told to you. Your birthright is being stolen because it's been stolen through fraud contracts. So we're going to hit on a few things to give you some understanding on what you've been dealing with and some of the problems that you've been having, but what we prefer to give you knowledge rather than rallying you to be angry at anyone. The real deal is that you not, have not honored your mothers and your fathers. And so certain knowledge was taken from you, and it made you what you would call a dead carcass victim. The other thing that I want to give to you as far as a knowledge base is concerned, many scholars and historians will make issues about our people being miseducated. For instance, Carter G. Woodson has a book most of you are, are, are familiar with, The Miseducation of the Negro. Well, the first part of the miseducation is in the title itself, because you're not Negroes. That's part of your miseducation. It's a brand. So keys are in language. And I want to say this particularly to the young children, and mainly to the mothers, because the mother's the key, because we get raised by women. Even in our warped, mis- judgment and mistreatment of women because we don't know how to act. It's because they don't know the science of themselves. And so what we want to do is also talk about the truth of what is, not an allegorical story, not in signs and symbols, but absolutely straightforward and what it is, and let it truth fall where they may, let the chip fall where they may. Some things you're going to be familiar with, some things you're not going to be familiar with. We're going to have a question and answer session also so that some of your questions will be answered. I want everyone to know from all the organized groups in the territory that anything that we say is not intended to knock anyone else. It is to give you the truth and deal with it. You understand? We are all caught in our imperfections, and we recognize that. But there are certain basics that are fundamental across this planet that must be returned to the people if they're going to receive any of their divine rights as citizens anywhere on this planet. That's more right here. Now, the other thing I want to say, particularly to the mothers, and it's important because you are the founders of civilization for real, let's get rid of it for real, you need to understand your connection to this land, what they call the promised land. But I'm going to come at you masonically on some issues to give you some light on the 33 degree mason that you know as Martin Luther King. And I'm going to give you some keys and I'm going to show you some things, and then I'm going to make some ties to it for you and show you what's in front of your face. Some people ain't going to like it, but guess what we got to do? We got to grow up, and we got to get real, because we got to save our families, we got to save our babies. And guess what we can't do? We can't save them while playing emotional games and patting ourselves on the back and making nice royal statements, and yeah, yeah, and back tomorrow we're in nigger line. You know, we got to stop this crap. You understand what I'm saying? The only thing that's going to save our families is knowledge. These people are being destroyed not because they don't pray enough, not because they're not believers. They're being destroyed because they lack knowledge. Knowledge is the key. And I want to give you a story in the book of Revelation to give you an insight on what I'm talking about. When Yahshua ben Yosef, and that's the name of the prophet who they call Jesus, Jesus is a code word. And Jesus means justice. And if you want to get to Jesus and understand that book of light, which is a heliotech, which is the book of the sun, you must understand what you're reading. I'm going to give you some keys. When the book opens, it talks about the tree of life. But I'm going to tell you another point on that. That's actually tetragrammaton. But that goes into more science. 
That's some of your culture that was removed from you. And then the book closes with Tree of Life. One deals with a negative and one deals with a positive, but they both deal with a tree of life. I'm going to leave that alone and think about it. So the people who should be telling you about that book ain't told you the truth. It's a guidebook, yes. It's a master guidebook. It's a cosmological book. So is the Holy Quran. So is Uwaspi. So is the Torah. You understand? And you know why they can't paint the face of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him? Because Muhammad is actually the ether, and you can't paint all them stars. And that's the real truth. Now, masters know these things. The rabbinate knows these things. Adepts know these things. Grand sheiks know these things. Shakuns know these things. Eastern stars know these things. Skull and bones know these things. Jesuits know these things. The rulers of the planet know these things but they haven't told you. So I'm going to give you a little key to give you an idea of what's been going on under your nose. I want the sister to open up with the energy. And she's going to open the energy with a little bit of more science that is usually not told to you. Because you must understand what your creator has made for you. And this is a principle that has always been applied by all governments and is applied today, right on your nose, but they don't let you see this, so Yarahaz takes place, meaning that no movement is made in government without them checking the movement of the planet that govern this planet. you start degree is a day as well you ought to Same be with science. So more is science is science. Science is because you are a more, a more love, the first principle, of course your culture is the science. They go together. Mores and science do not separate. So conscience with science, with cosmological influence that influenced this plane that we're on right now. So I'm going to read what those influences are. Some planets last for seven years, they're generational, others move quickly, such as the quickest is the moon. I found it very interesting where the planetary effects are for this special day, being here in Detroit for the first time, very special. Let me read to you so you will understand why. So as we're letting our conscience be our guide, come on, better sit down. First of all, the sun is 19 Pisces meaning spring will start in another uh, 20 days or so, or 10, 11 days or so. And this means that we are steeped in, in character, in work that is being done behind the scenes, in the areas of sacredness and assistance to man because sacred is secret. Once, or what was once, what the secret was sacred. But now what is happening at the turn of the time is that the sacredness is the secret that is now, that has been kept for too long. So they go hand in hand with each other. So we are being unveiled. That secret and that sacredness is being unveiled to you. The energy of the moon, which is the inner motive of, of the soul, the matter of the soul for, for the day, is the aspiration of higher knowledge, higher spiritual knowledge, certainly what's going on for the day. The Mercury, which is your reasoning intellect, is in Aquarius, and Aquarius is about humanity, 
mankind, man and mankind, and society, institutions, associations, just where we are, any public institution or public gathering as we are in today, and by it being there, our intellect is founded in reasoning for the betterment of man. That's where, what the energy is flowing for today. And Venus, which is your love nature, and love being the first principle, is, re is this is very, very, very powerful because it's in parallel with, uh, of course, Mars, Venus and Mars being opposite. Venus is in Aries. So that initiating cardinal energy, your passions and your activities for the day must be influ is influenced by the principle of love. And Mars itself is in Aquarius. So that love and that passion and an activity is to be balanced in work for humanity. Everything is in harmony for a very special day today. Um, Neptune, hidden things are in Aquarius as, I mean, yes, Aquarius as well. So, of course, the, we must be aware of some who may have some hidden agenda not to have this information exposed. But it is to be exposed because the sacredness is to unveil the secret. The call of the day is to unveil the secret. Um, and lastly, just a few more, Pluto, which is an undertone, an undertone that's running, roaring undertone, is at the base of higher knowledge because Pluto is in Sagittarius as well spiritual knowledge, higher knowledge. Um, Jupiter is in Sagittarius as well, and that's Jupiter's home. So your rewards will come to you once you be come to a higher, your higher self and lower self. Mm -hmm. You must reach your higher self, spirituality, because we're spiritual and physical. The physical is the lower self. This ain't the be all and end all, this is the test. The spiritual is the higher self and bringing it together. So that's based in that, and our disciplines are in, no, I'm gonna say that with the last, impulses, Uranus. Uranus is in Pisces. Mm. So the impulses to unveil the secret, the sacredness, are strong for the day. This is what has to happen. This, uh, and actually not just for the day, because Uranus stays for seven years. So when your babies come, they're gonna have this automatic character about them, all right? You'll see that in the eyes. Um, so we must, so by Uranus being in, in Pisces, we are given the work to deal with, to acknowledge, to an, and to accept the sacredness that will be unveiled to you for you to turn it around and impart that to others. All right? And lastly, discipline, Saturn and Leo. Well, Leo is the teacher. The whole purpose of the solar system is Leo. That's why they act like they're the center of attention, because they are. And they are, <laughs> she must be like, she was looking ahead. And they, <laughs> and they are the teachers. Uh, they, they have an authoritative demeanor. Uh, Leos are about teaching, and that's what's going on today. Teaching, so your disciplines are there, and, your, and the rewards are in high knowledge. This is a beautiful, wonderful day. I wouldn't want to be here and any other planetary influences than these, because these are great. So peace and love to you, and enjoy your information sharing. Right, give me the mic. Oh, do I have it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know I have it. Thank you. Won't they do anything mm -hmm. else, though? Mm -hmm. um, ev can you hear me? All right, because I'm usually loud, anyhow. But um, please get your pens out. And I want to make a mention to all the sisters, too, to all the queens. How many of you seen the cover of the questionnaire in the Moorish Science Temple of America, the 101s? You seen it? How many other people have seen it? This questionnaire, sometimes you see it in the blue cover. It's got Noble Drali with the woman unconscious. On her womb, on her womb is written humanity. He's got a foot on a solid rock, and it's called salvation. There's a dark cloud in the background, and he's stepping out of water. And then the dark cloud says the cares of the world. And she's unconscious. And it has nine drops of water coming off her body. Preacher tells a thousand words. You need to understand what that's really saying. Look at that again. Now, let's deal with some geometry, physics, or mathematics. Percentiles. Alpha and omega is the most perfect geometric symbol on the planet. It is called the circle. That circle is 360 degrees. Mathematically, 
360 degrees is 100%. The 100% and the 360 degrees mean the whole or the holistic of it all. Metaphysically, it's called the cosmos, cosmology, the universe. This is why when the mothers give birth to their sons and daughters and they send them outside of the first school, which is the womb, and that's another thing you sisters need to know, and particularly, please sisters, teach your daughters while they're young. The womb is the first school for the human species. Teach them the truth about themselves and they will educate their children in their womb. Metaphysically, that story is told where Mary and Elizabeth is administered by the angels. They're actually talking about the applied science of the number nine. The real deal is, is that John and Yahshua ben Yosef, who they know as Jesus, were taught in their mother's womb, and when they were born, they were born educated, knowing the job they had to do. But the rule came from their mother, though she may have been silent. Don't, so don't you make a mistake about who she really is either. Because great, great as them brothers was, their mothers were greater. Because you can't produce something greater than yourself. And I want to present this to you all, you sisters, too. And this is what the problems that we're having in men and women because we didn't brought into the Constantine doctrines. And we have flipped this thing. And we might have two muscles and all that kind of crap. But how can you produce a son and then he rule you? I mean, let's get real with this. These are lessons of life that you've got to turn around and you've got to flip some of this twist crap that you've learned through pseudo-religion. And that's not knocking anybody's what they thought was religion. Don't misunderstand me. I'm just talking the truth. Because I'm talking divine law, divine nature, that which nature, the divine creator has made. You cannot deny that and stop doing it. Because a lot of the evils that have come down on us is because we're in violation of divine law. And a son can't be greater than his mother. And nobody got here but through her. So now let's talk about Adam, Eve, Edimon, Nucleus, Quark, Proton, Electron, energy that operates in this universe. Adam and Eve, the story of Adam and Eve is given for little children. Adam and Eve was not the first beings on this planet. Make no mistakes about it. That's modern history. These are part of the secrets that have been held from back from the world. It is really a story we gave to children so they can understand how this universe works. The same thing you see in the atom with the nucleus, the proton, electrons, etc., and those ribs of them going around that sun or that nucleus but never touching the Son of God, but yet it generates life and light the same principle with electricity, how you have this light in here. You got the positive and negative forces that rotate around. You don't see it, but it brings light. But also light also means life. It also means knowledge. Now let's deal with the truth. When they're children, we tell them Adam and Eve and we give it a personality because a child can relate to it. But when you become a man and a woman, they're supposed to give you the science and tell you that that's Adam, the smallest building block even though smaller than that is the quark, the building block is atom. And the rib is the pathways of those proton, electron, planetary paths, just like this greater universe, that generate life. And that's evolution, and that's Eve. But that's for adults. Problem has been is that the wicked colleagues, rabbis, etc., have kept the people on the level of belief and didn't tell them the truth of the masters. This is why even when the Nazarene was on the scene and he had to deal with these demons who knew the truth but would not speak the truth, he came to them to give them a chance to redeem the people, to tell them the truth, telling them to get back to the law of their ancient fathers. And he also told them, I did not come to change the law, so why are you all playing these games? Act like I'm bringing some different law than Moses and the rest of the prophets, because the law don't change and the truth don't change and it don't pass away. So you can come off that crap. But he was angry at him because he exposed them. They had no intentions of telling the people the truth. And understand this, ain't no devil killed the Nazarene. 
organized religionists murdered the Nazarene and blamed it on the devil. That ain't did nothing. That has no power except what you give to him. And they don't want you to know that because they don't want you to take responsibility for your actions. But let's look at this reality. If Allah makes judgment on man for man's deeds, and the Nazarene came to show and to demonstrate to man the perfection of life, the possibilities of man, he lived that life. And the other thing that you need to know about the Nazarene is more teachings that the Nazarene had that was held back from you. There's 18 years of it. But they had the Nicene Council with the Roman ruler Constantine and his mother with the plan to conquer the earth. And so they had what is known as the Nicene Council, 325 AD after they assassinated him and made what was known as the Niceno-Constantinopian Creed and was using the Nazarene's name, but they used the code word Jesus as a code word to hide the real history because also there was Yashir also with Prophet Mu Mu uh, uh, Musa that you know as Moses. And so rather than writing the history, Yashir II, they say they voted and murdered a lot of people who wouldn't go along with it and called him Jesus after Zeus, the Roman God. And there is no J in Hebrew, so you already know that's not his name. But it's not to hurt anyone's feelings to tell you the truth so that you can be who you say that you are. If you say you love the Nazarene, then be real and call him what his mother called him. And his name was Yahshua and have respect for him. Many people don't because they don't know better. So I'm telling you the truth so you can cross-reference it and research it and find out for yourself that you've been played, and you've been played big time. And the same ones that murdered him have you worshiping actually Constantine and you didn't know it. That's why you haven't been able to solve any problem. He came amongst his own and you received him not because you didn't recognize him. Also, you must understand that he traveled the world. He went in what you know today as Pira. Ancient Pira is actually Hindustan, which you know today as India. The great dynasties that set up the ancient culture there and the Sanskrit text is the Mauryan dynasty, Nanda dynasty, Gupta dynasty, the three major dynasties that made that culture in Europe, I mean, pardon me, in Upper Asia, Asia Major, that you all call, well, I'm going to go to the, to the mystics, to the Tibet, and get the great secrets. That's your own history. You need to understand that. And you need to also understand that those secret lessons of the Nazarene was taken up into the mountains by the ancient Moabites, actually by the Moors, who were descendants of the ancient Moabites, to, to protect them from the crusaders who were burning everything they could get their hands on. And that's how the Circle 7 Koran was preserved and brought back to you, tailored by Noble Dr. Ali. And you didn't know that. He didn't write it. It came down from your ancient fathers. And that's actually Jesus' direct lessons. And many people don't know that. And Masons won't tell you what I'm telling you. And the governments have it. Preachers got them. And they'll give you that. It's called banned literature. But the secret societies will send you to that literature under yoga lessons and other things and don't tell you that that's really your ancient history. But Nobody Ali delivered it back to you. And so for some people who really don't understand, you need to understand, he gave instructions thereafter in the Holy Quran Circle 7, but those fundamental lessons from the Nazarene himself. And guess what, when you get into them, you're gonna get mad because it's so clear, so instructive, so right guiding, and you wonder why, why everything has to be interpreted to you. Because truth don't need to be interpreted, and it don't need an excuse or an apology. You'll learn a lot. I'm just telling you that so you have something to go for. Then others in secret societies also hide some of it in a book called The Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ. But usually, only people in secret societies are directed to that. And if you go looking for it, it's what you call a rare stock book. You ask for it, and then some places act like they don't know what you're talking about. But if you're Mason, Skull and Bones, Eastern Star, etc., 
Uh, you come with a password, they'll let you know. Do you understand? Well, but that belongs to you. And so that's all the brothers and sisters that go to church, mosques, and synagogues so you can get some of the real lessons and raise yourself up. Because he is the enlightened one. I want you also to understand this. The Nazarene, like most of the people, think that Buddha was an individual. Buddha is a title. And the other reason why they didn't want you to know all the truth about the Nazarene, because he was also a Buddha. How many people knew that? You see the problem? Yet many people think that they're following the Nazarene, don't they? Uh, let's be real about it. But they have not been told all the truth. But don't fear the truth. Embrace it. It'll make you uncomfortable, but once you read it, you recognize that it's a place for everybody on this planet. And you need to learn to love instead of hate. A lot of the confusion that exists with people is because they don't know things, and they fear each other. But they fear each other because we have come with a bunch of interpretations that always lead people to vaguety. Then they always want your lunch money after that. They're always telling you that God's broke. You know, let's, let's, let's be honest with it. But you must understand this. We must be dealing with reality. We are brothers and sisters. We need to help each other. If you're going to have institutions, you're going to have to support those institutions. But don't get fooled that somebody's giving God his half and Jesus his half because it ain't happening. They took Susie to the Bahamas. No, like, hey. You understand? So what you give, you get it out of love and let it be accounted for. You understand what I'm saying to you? Because any God that needs money, which is a medium that man makes to transact resource business on this planet Earth, don't, you don't need him. He needs you because he can't work unless you pay him. <laughs> and then he always promises him that he never delivers. But it ain't nothing wrong with that. What's wrong is that he's been misrepresented. That's what I'm saying to you. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So don't feel bad and it's not under attack. It's just that it's time for you to come to the level of thinking again and respect the highest science known to man. Floor's open. What is the highest science known to man? Say it again. You can say that. But let's get let's get let's get real. Because we know we're new obvious. Yes? All right, let's cut through the chase. The highest science known to man is divinely given by Allah. It's called common sense. You were looking for something really deep. Well, guess what? That's really deep. The point that I'm making to you is, is that truth need not be told in some complicated mystical form. We've gotten so buried in allegorical stories and mysticism that we have failed to recognize what Allah has given us, every one of us in common. Your taste, your touch, your sight, your feel, your hearing, these senses combined into one create that eye or opens up the pineal gland and the pituitary gland, which are actually spiritual glands. And you have a nerve center that comes from the dark side of the brain, comes across the crown of the nose right here from the thalamus. This is symbolized in ancient Mizraim that they call Egypt when you see that crown with that asp up there. It actually means the activation of the pituitary and the pineal gland, the third eye. And you must go to the fifth dimension to come down to the fourth. But you must also go to the sixth to open up that third eye, even though you're dealing in a third dimensional plane on the third rock from the sun that you call the plane of earth. That's why they give you three lights or three degrees and the basics that you need to understand about language or etymon is the word or third grade. So I'm really talking to you on a third grade level before you fell to slavery. So don't think this is PhD stuff because it ain't. So some things I'm gonna say to you don't assume because you haven't heard it before that is deep because it's not deep because I'm dumb. But I do study. You understand what I'm saying? Another thing I want to hand to you, as I told you earlier, how many of you have a fiat note in your pocket? Pull out a one fiat note. This is important because much of this has to do with the protections of your rights that we're going to get into later on. But I'm, right now, I'm going to get into Martin Luther King back 
behind a brother and give you some, a, a little few Masonic keys. <clears throat> and show you what you don't pay attention to. Now for the babies, um, how many children we got here, like in the, uh, um, say third grade, we got any third grade children in here? Baby, queen, can you stand up please? Give your little sister a hand, what's your name? Now, I wanna, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna demonstrate something to you and it's very important for us to get our children involved because that's the key. Because most of us are so contaminated that the things that actually need to be done to redeem our people, even though some of us have the consciousness, is not gonna be done by us because we're too corrupt and we're compromised. You understand? Now, just because we did deliver the knowledge don't mean that we've reached a perfected state, but it don't mean we don't see the light either. But we have to get it to them before they get contaminated because they're gonna save the world and the truth that is necessary is gonna come from them. Little queen, in school, did they teach you the parts of speech? All right, now, I wanna make this point to the parent. You better fix that and you're not gonna get it in their schools. And I'm gonna show you and demonstrate to you why she needs it. And particularly, she being a female, a mother. When she came out her mother's womb, on both sides of her, on the left side and on the right of her ark and her covenant, she got a whole nation of eggs when she was born. And that's the truth. You're gonna to have to teach her how to use that energy because she's the most powerful being on this planet so that they don't misuse it. But she has to know herself. So we wanna talk about Adam, Edamon, Elam in a minute. Baby, there's eight parts of speech. Now keep that in mind, right? Now I'm gonna remi remind you, I told you all to pull out that note, right? You see those two seals on the back of that note and it's not a dollar bill. All right, you can sit down, sister. But listen carefully, little queen, even though some things you may not understand right now, let what I speak to you sink in your head and it'll come wake on you as you get about 18 years old because you got a lot of work to do. Believe me, you do, because you got a weight of the world on your shoulders, because we didn't mess this thing up. And we've been hypocritical, too. And we've been so busy protecting our clubs and the little clubs, the churches, mosques, and synagogues, the temples we belong to, that we've been trying to maintain membership rather than trying to free the people. And we got to recognize that we're brothers and sisters. Got one mother and one father. And truth is universal. And when it stops being universal, look for a lie. Now, on the back of that seal, keep in mind we were talking about Martin Luther King, right? Can you hear me? Because I'm going to walk away from this for a minute. You see that seal right there? I wish I had it bigger to show it to you. But if you notice that that eye on that pyramid is connected. The eye on your pyramid is not connected. You see his fez? That is the geometrical representation of the womb of woman. Uh-huh. I saw your eyes. You see this little button right here? That's navel. At the solar plexus. There's three rows of perforations on the top the crown of this in four sets. Three and four is what? Yeah. On that circle, isn't it? Mm -hmm. These degrees is tied to a cord that comes out that navel. Spiritually, that's called the silver cord that comes out of the base of my spine chakra on up to my crown chakra to the heavens. And it's always north wherever I stand not necessarily where you see the compass point. These degrees represent the sun wrapped or rolling around, not the earth, it's actually the earth moving around the sun. Yes. 
and it does mean what you think it means, but it also means what you don't know that they don't tell you about that buildings that you've been walking past since you was going to school and you can't figure out what's happening is because they are full life citizens of the planet and you are civil little de uh, 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 trash, really. And it does mean what you think it means, but it also means what you don't know that they don't tell you about that. Five more times, you ain't necessarily going to be free. You give the rabbi or the preacher five more dollars, you still ain't necessarily going to be free. But you get the truth, and believe me, you will be free. Do you understand? I'm going to tell you something else about Muslims, too. Baby, stand up again, baby. She's Muslim. Now let me tell you how. Her mother made her without the sound of a hammer, without the rasp of a saw. And you didn't hear no chipping of no axe. And she is most perfectly made. That's the temple of God. And guess what? She can reproduce herself, too. And sometimes she makes sons. We pop out once in a while. <laughs> Women, ruler of the planet, does not have boys and girls when she produces herself. She has all female eggs. Male eggs do not exist in nature. Nowhere. I'm getting back to this in a minute. We are neutered females. We are neutered females. That's why by the time we seven, we go, and all that kind of stuff. Then as soon as we get eight, maybe we get drops a little bit, and you start, oh, yeah, he's getting an Adam's apple and stuff. Yeah. But you need to understand these realities. Do you understand? You change the chemistry in the womb according to the aspects of the planets and your experience. And then you do the miracle of the birth of the Son of God by way of changing the energy of that female egg, generating testosterone out of your estrogen and other energies that you have. You're a chemist and a master builder. Do you understand? And so you mutate that female egg and make a son. That's why you're so proud of your son and spoil our dumb it, heinies. <laughs> Let's be real about this, because it needs to be told so that we can straighten this thing up. Because since we've adopted pseudo-religious ideas, Men have the wrong idea about themselves, and women have the wrong idea about themselves, and we can't fix a lot of things because you're full of crap. Not personally, because your concepts are all wrong. Because beliefs are for children. You're adults, and you're supposed to know. You're not boys and girls. But that's also why they've been calling you boys and girls, because our mental state is that of a minority. And it don't mean numbers. It means mental state. And that's a legal term. You need to know that. You really do. So when you call yourself a minority and people of color, do you know what you just said legally that counts all over this planet? How many people know what color really means? Nobody Ali said, Moors, you are not Negroes, blacks, or colored people. Do you know why he said that? Negro is a word that came into the language of the human family due to experiments that took place in Southwest Africa, in Central Africa, Axel, that you think now is America. The continent on that side is Alkibalan. Was not called Africa until contemporary times when the European Crusaders changed the maps. You're standing on Africa. That's why they don't deport you. They just build jails. And I'm going to give you a military document to also show it to you and show you what a lot of leaders say, call them, no, but ain't told you. And Georgie wasn't the first president either. I'm going to show you those documents, too. 
You understand? And the reason I'm going to do it because I have to set the stage for you to understand what your birthright is, what your lost estate is, and how to get it back. You hear what I'm saying, sister? Hmm? And the brother, with the brother we talk, you hear what I'm saying? Huh? And there's a difference between real estate and real property, too. And birthright can't be sold with honor. And nationality is free, so say no Ali. So how many people have been had, been sold their nationality through some document? See the games and play with you? That's why I'm here. Because a lot of people have misused my name and said I sanctioned that crap. And anything I sanction, I put it to the pen. Whatever I stand for, I put it to the pen. Noble Drew Ali said, in order to change the people, you must change their literature. And that was his charge to all Moorish Americans, and particularly to Adam. And Adam means expert. Did you know that? Did you know that? Sheik means expert. And it means just what it means. Sheik, S-H, it's a C, but it's also the sound, it's really she. Because the inheritance comes from and through the woman. You want to trace the human family? Don't look at the daddy, look at the mom. Now that's the real truth, so stop the bull. Because we got to fix this. We got to stop playing games. We got to remove our egos. And the only reason I'm up here as a son is because I'm a soldier. And I'm not important other than that. So don't get that twisted either. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm only here because it's important for us to raise the sisters up so she can become conscious and take over her job running this planet. Because we don't have the compassion the way the mothers do. We're mostly mechanical. You take us brothers, you understand? We boys, right? We can go play some basketball, you understand? Go rolling, doing stuff. 2,000 notes in our pocket. You understand? Go eat a peanut butter sandwich, sleep all sweaty on the sofa, and we cool. <laughs> Wash our hands. Sister come around, we want to get make silk curtains, get mag wheels, and fix up stuff. We can build some beautiful buildings, but only a woman can decorate it. You, you need to understand there's a balance here. It's a yin and yang thing. You need to understand these principles. So we not, need to get ego out of this thing and get back to where we need to be so that harmony can be brought into your houses again. Much of the disharmony that's in the house, I'm going to tell you bluntly, in particular your sisters and your younger sisters, and you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Woman is the most powerful being on the planet. When she calls, we answer. Don't do that. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Huh? And women know women's power. That's why women get uncomfortable when women misuse that energy. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about. All right? Uh-huh. Listen to this. The reason why in olden days, amongst the ancient Moabites and Canaanites, that the brothers had to come to the family to ask for the hand of the sister, because she wasn't going nowhere without him coming to the family first. There ain't no party date, brother. Because the job of the mother and the father is to make sure that that family has culture. And culture is the foundation that bonds civilization together. And without culture, you got dead culture. Today is called black society. Don't take it personal. You need to understand what's being said to you. And guess what? Those are legal terms, for real, more than what you think they are. I'm just opening up Pandora's box and let you know how the world is actually dealing with you. How many of you Asiatics in here know that you're white people? You know how the old gospel songs, when they talk about white as snow, I want to be whiter, whiter than snow? It's a status. It's not complexion. It is not complexion. There is no white nation in Europe. Don't exist. They might have peanut butter sandwiches, but they ain't in a white nation. You understand? Now let me go to the Book of Law. Noble Drawley said to the Moors, he says, Moors, if you don't believe or you don't think that the program 
that I have to redeem my people and the citizens are correct, go to those who know law. Go to your government heads and ask them in an intelligent tone, and I'm sure they will give you a favorable reply. However, for certain circumstances, constitutional law principles were not maintained in our order because of infiltrators. So at the same time when they were infiltrating Marcus Garvey, they infiltrated Noble Drew Ali. That's right. Same time, you need to understand this, but they worked together. That's right. And a lot of people don't tell you that. I'm telling you. But I'm going to give you some keys so that you can retrieve that knowledge and when you get information that you, it can be functional to you. It is important for you to know these things. I want you to write these down. I'm going to give you a series of words. Your charge is the adults go to your law libraries or go to your own law, law library and research this and teach it to your children because it is vital for you to start preserving your rights because you can't obtain or sustain inalienable rights, not only in this society, but in any society, if you don't correct these things that I'm getting ready to tell you. And don't take my word for it either. Challenge me too. But I'm going to go to law. I want to tell you parents who teach your children, particularly those who are homeschooled, et cetera, and pretty soon you're going to have to do it if you want to save them because they're not going to get taught in these schools. I'm telling you already, you can forget it. Don't get mad. I know it's daunting. The job is big, but guess what you did? You even built all these clubs. You even built all these churches. Don't tell me you can't build a school. Now, that's the truth. But it's important for the sisters to know this because you can teach the child before they're born. I'm going to hit you real, real quick so I can hit the spirit of you so you can know what I'm talking about because we don't need a lot of language. I'm going to speak to the higher mother, my mom. So I'm going to speak to my mom to speak to you. You already know that when you're not contaminating yourself with t alcohol, liquor, tobacco, and a whole bunch of wrong food, pork, greasy foods, the crap that's actually you're not supposed to touch. You know it, but you do what you want to do. <laughs> but let's get real. When that womb is working the way it should work, it does miraculous things. It's made this planet what it is, whether positive or negative. And when you see that onk, you know what the onk is? You know what that is? That's the deer metric symbolization of your womb. Those two arms is an ovary and an ovary. That loop is the uterus. And the stem is a birth canal. And it represents government, not just regeneration. The regeneration is because it's the womb. But it's a symbol. It's also called a sistrum sometimes. And it's used to represent the ruler in government. But you gave up your rule because you wanted a party. You want to exercise your lower nature, feel good nature, and you lost consciousness. And so we're a product of that. You need to understand that. So your state of mind also affects the atmosphere. Do you know what particulates are? You know what particulates are? Particulates are energies that begin to manifest, just like you take a photograph, but it happens on a more actual plane. If you take a body of people and content condition them to think a certain way, they start creating particulates. They actually affect the atmosphere. And what they think eventually manifests. The power of the womb is to bring birth to things, whether physical or not. Every time you deal on that 13-point cycle in the 12th cycle of the year. How much is 12 and 13? Huh? How much is two and five? You see that circle again? Seven? You need to understand what's being said to you. Because I'm being scientific now, not emotional. We're dealing with math. Math don't lie. Now I showed you the top of my fez, right? 
keep me on point because we're going to hit some other stuff. You see those circles? And I told you, you got three circles here. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That first set of holes on the top of this fez has nine perforations. That represents the element of air. And the element of air is spiritual. Your four corners of this earth, or this circle, also represents your north gate, south gate, your east gate, and your west gate. So when you see the pope do that, don't you think that that pope is talking about that cross of Constantine that they lynched the Nazarene on, because he's not. He's talking about the mundane cross of the rulership of the planet. That is the master seal. You hear me? That is called the master's seal. And that is part of your culture was taken from you, too. And it's called the mundane circle, also. And it's called the circle seven, also. Do you understand? Now I'm going to get into it scientifically to explain its geometry to you so you can understand when you see it, and you can also understand government. And you can understand why politicians do one thing, tell you another. That first set of perforations here is nine. Then there's a second set of perforations. And that will be 12. Then there's a third set of perforations. And that will be 18. But it will give the general appearance of one circle, two circles, three circles. You understand? Four times. And so you got a set of three circles in four corners, or what is called quadrants. Right? And that's your seven, 360 degrees, which is 100%, which is alpha, omega, and that's what they ain't telling you in the books. But doctors of law get this, doctors of philosophy get this, rulers of the planet get this, and they give you beliefs. Are you following me? Don't take it personal. Don't get mad. Do you understand? That's why everybody in your secret societies, including the Europeans, that we always be claim, complaining about where your fez. That represents, as figure number one, represents the ruler of the terrestrial plane. And you weren't always on this planet either. So that's another thing. That's a whole different lesson. So you need to understand these things because these things have been held back from you. And so your concepts will definitely be wrong because they didn't give you all of the scripture to keep you small-minded and keep you cutting each other's throat for your versions of gods. You heard what I said? Your versions of gods. I'm talking about love and killing each other. Did you understand what I'm saying? Now you understand why they ran Prophet Muhammad out of Mecca. Why they ran the Nazarene out of Galilee. Do you understand? You, I don't understand. These, these are telling you things. But the same people that ran the prophets is now trying to tell you what religion is. That's why the world's messed up. But we don't want to charge them because we believe them. But they'll cut your throat when you don't give their God $2. And wish your children would go out on the highway and play at noon because you ain't a believer in their, in their game. In truth, you don't need to believe. You need to know. Are, are, you, are you following me? Huh? The reason the prophets came is to get you to know, not for you to believe. That's why they always told you, don't believe me. Believe in the word. Because first there was the word. Pay attention to this because I'm getting ready to give you the edamon. And the word was with God. 
and the word was God. You've got to pay attention to what's being said to you. Now I'm going to give you Adam, the Edimon, Elam. How many people heard the term? It's not a term, it's actually a plural name. Elohim. And there's really no H, it's Elam. How many people know what that really means? Brother, share with us. It indeed is. Let me demonstrate to you Elam so you can see Elam in the book of Revelation, which means to reveal, but it's given to you in symbols, then I'm going to give it to you in fact. He was standing among seven candlesticks. They saw one standing in the midst of seven candlesticks. Yet in his right hand, he had seven stars. What does that mean? What do you think it really means? What it means, they are symbols of Elam. And even in Yude, when we have the menorah, you got nine, also have seven. The nine represents woman. They don't tell you that part. The seven represents the seven ruling planets in this particular solar system ever since we came here and peopled this place. There are seven symbols of light that actually represent the seven ruling planets of all the planets in the solar system, and their names are, to the common people, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, it sounds simple, doesn't it? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But they have holy names, and at the end of each of their holy names is Eel, which means God. Singularly, they are called Eloah. Collectively, as a family, they're called Elam. Now, how many of you knew that when you'd be reading that in the Bible, the Holy Quran, and other holy books? But the doctors who teach you this know that, but they're sworn to secrecy not to tell you. Well, I'm telling you. It's time for you to get free. Because it's part of your birthright. That's what Noble Drali brought back to you. He said, study, study, study. And when you would have studied well and would ask me what to study next, I would reply, study yourselves. Because you got a grand lost estate and you're suffering for nothing. You know why you're suffering? And that includes me. I'm not just going to talk in trash. I'm not separate from this. It's because we spent too much time believing when we should have been knowing generations ago. The light is this. First, there is belief. I'm going to go this again. First, there is belief. Then there's faith. Then there's fruition. That's why you have that eye at the top of there, which means all the collective senses come into one sight, but it's metaphysical. And let me tell you something else that you don't notice about that pyramid on the back of that note, and it's not a dollar, because a dollar is a silver coin, a gold coin, only. Yakum thala. And that's all it is. I'm going to go into the covenant of government and demonstrate to you how you're never getting paid in your bills when you thought that you were freed. And this is going to give you your foundation knowledge on how to challenge contracts and how to challenge the IRS and anyone else that makes demands on you about your birthright. Do you understand? Facts, not emotions. But I'm going to give you something to work with. But you must honor your mothers and your fathers because status is key in all societies on the planet Earth. The honor of your mothers and fathers is engrossed in it tied up in it, bound in it, don't know it, don't talk about freedom because it doesn't exist for you. Identity is connected to that status. And you better be exactly and in factually who you say that you are. That's why Noble Drawley says, I am teaching you to be yourself. Lawfully, it is 
in propria persona sujuris. And when you sign any contract saying in propria persona sujuris, you are telling the world that I am well prepared, well disciplined, well knowing in the law or the science of law, not law, but jurisprudence to govern my affairs, unencumbered and loyal in my thinking. And guess what when you made a contract like that? They're going to hold you to it. You better not have done it and signed that European's name when you did it. All right. And this goes for those who've been using uniform commercial codes and didn't know that. Back to the work of what the Moore Science Temple set up for you that a lot of people didn't know because they went past it thinking that it wasn't important. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I need you to understand this because it's for your own good. So you don't get hung up there, somebody trying to sell you your birthright when it's already been delivered to you. Are, are you following me? It doesn't mean that you ain't going to contract uni doing uniform commercial codes because those rules of commerce are ancient. But the Christians got them from the Moors when they defeated the Moors in 1492 and took over the trade routes. Then they branded the Moors, Negroes, blacks, and coloreds and split them up. So they don't know that they're the true sovereigns of the planet. And so ancient history and modern history is determined by the historians and the scholars of the planet Earth by the year 1492. Distinguishing the ancient history of the planet and civilization and contemporary conquest time Anno Domini, after domination. That's what A.D. actually means. The year of domination. So you need to know what these things really mean, not what they've been telling you. That's why you were enslaved, because you are those defeated Moors. And they can't deport you because you're home. So they reconstructed the history and told you they brought you here. They didn't even know the world was round. They thought it was flat, and you believed them. Logistically, it couldn't have been done. For your information, if you deal with some of the family in the South Gate, Mexico, that you call Mexico, and you come with a pure heart, they will tell you some of your history. For real. We have pyramids under jungle on the cities that were abandoned due to the great experiments, the Albo Hybrida experiments that some people know as the Yakubian experiments that took place in South America, Southwest Africa. The Hybrida were not seeds that dropped off of the caves of the Caucasus Mountains and became the caveman. So the ice man did not cometh. <laughs> Charles Darwin, the naturalist, who gave you the coded story, also Master Mason, gave you the coded story about the development of the so-called missing link. They will never find the skeleton of the missing link because it doesn't exist. What is missing is the truth about human history and development on the earth plane and the great experiments that took place in the Pyramid of the Sun that's older than the Pyramid of Giza in Misraim, that you call Egypt. Right here in Northwest Central, Southwest Africa, that you know as North America, that is actually ancient Amexum. The technology was done near the Pyramid of the Sun. The actual hybrida experiments took place in Patagonia that you know today as Argentina. With the intention of the development of the golden child that you know as the United States of Brazil. 
República dos Estados Unidos do Brasil, United States of America, Brazil. You must also understand this with geology and geometry and geophysics and geopolitics. If you fail to know this, somebody's going to rob you. That's why they miseducated your children. Because they changed the names of the map of Mundi. The map of Mundi is what they told you is the maps. To displace you mentally. Because the impact of the Moors was so great on the planet, they couldn't burn all the information. That's why they named you Negro, Black, Colored, Latino, Hispanics, and whatever you are next week to divide you and then conquer you. <laughs> in the Taino, the Carib Moors in the South Gate, when they defeated the Moors in Andalus, that you know as Spain, which it is not Spain, Queen Isabella, King Ferdinand merged their kingdoms so that the conquerors could complete the crusades that evolved actually out of the Punic Wars. Uh, you follow me? These wars are from ancient to present. Mark these down because you're going to do your research. Punic Wars, P-U-N-I-C, wars. They're going to list about four of them, but actually it was about 12. But they're going to deal with the major ones. You may not get them in your modern history books because they've been wiping it literally out. Editing and editing and editing. That's why they told you to throw away your grandma's books. Because that's where the knowledge is. Also, those old dictionaries on the bridge, don't you throw them out. When we teach the children the science of how to read, a child can go in one of those older dictionaries and educate themselves. So remind me so I don't get lost. Pull me back to Adam, the Edomon, because I'm going to give you the word of God in a minute and show you, prove to you what it is. Then you're going to go into the Christian Crusades. And for those scholars in here, please do not be sensitive. Let me tell you the truth. The one they called Jesus was Yehudi. He was not Christian, didn't have nothing to do with it. That's Rome, the ones who murdered him and used his name to hide the truth so they could conquer the world because they knew the people would believe in him. Now, you're going to go to an unabridged dictionary. I'm going to show you what a child can find out. I'm going to show you why people who come from around the world have little respect for these people that call themselves black this week. There'll be something else next week. But um, I'm going to show you because this is facts. How many people know how to count? How much is this? <laughs> how much is that? <laughs> Fundamental principles, aren't they? So let's get a little bigger. How much is that? <laughs> yeah, right. How much is 100? 100 take away 1. How much is that? <laughs> Woo! All right, let's cut to the chase. Go to the Unabridged Dictionary, and I want you to look up the Nicene Creed. Nicene Creed, N-I-C-E-A-N-E. -E. Often spelled that way, Nicene, also nice, all right? Now, I'm going to tell you what you want to find, and I'm going to show you again why the world that has very little respect for people who think they, whatever they are this week, who think the world's against them. I want to preface that with this. How many people have been feeding that game about racism? How often we talk about it? Let me say this to you all with all due respect. Fail to understand the science of language, and you will fail to rise to the level of culture that's necessary to save you. Are you following me? Fail to learn the rules that govern language. 
and you will fail to rise to the level of culture necessary. I didn't say good idea, I said necessary for your social, economic, and political salvation. And the one who miseducated you are not going to give you the reference keys. It's back to Noble Drawley again. Edamon. How many people know what Edamon is? Yes, it is. Edamon is the singular principle of mother, which is the root, true, original, foundation, meaning of a word. And the word's God, isn't it? Now you see why they tell you that the pen is mightier than the sword? I want to drop, I'm hitting you with things that you're familiar with to make things that you're not familiar with make sense to you. That's, what, that's why I'm coming the way I'm coming. Because I want you to understand what I'm saying. I don't want you to really accept it. I want you to challenge it. But I want to give you enough substance with what I tell you that you can go and prove me a liar. I'm not interested in you believing me. I'm not important. I'm interested in giving you certain keys that I know you're not going to get because Masons are not going to tell you this. And the rabbis are not going to tell you this. Skull and Bones ain't going to tell you this. Eastern Star is not going to tell you this, although they get symbolic, symbolically the same information. Because they're bound before they're told certain things. Then by the time they start figuring out what they got, they're already bound to the bond and can't speak for fear of death. You understand? Hmm? So what I'm telling you is important. I'm going to come at this again to give you an idea from a 33 degree mason. That note that you got in your hand. You know what? I'm tired of this crap. That's what was in the mind. Because certain information was passed that certain persons were going to be neutralized. So the personality was trying to get some pressure off of them at the same time they was trying to save their reputation. They said, tonight, I'm not fearing any man. I love life. Longevity has its place. See, I've been to the mountain top, and I've seen the promised land. Look at that seal on your dollar bill, and it ain't a dollar bill. We'll get into that later. I might not get there with you, but we as a people will make it to the promised land. He broke. His oath, Masonic. Translation, he threatened the Don. And you don't threaten the Don because you can't take it back. He had to go. But he already knew that was going to happen anyway. That's why conveniently certain people were standing back. <laughs> the aim was to solo man's temple, Solomon's temple. Secret code assassination. Though they missed, they hit the neck. But the aim was for the temple of man. But you need to understand Masonically what that means. That's another thing. We ain't going to that, but I'm dropping things at you because I'm talking to your spirit man, not to you. And you know it already. I'm just reminding you, I'm agitating you a little bit. And don't think you don't know because you do know. You know a lot more than you think you know. But it's time for you to know what you thought you didn't know. Because the only brain that you got is not here. It's in every cell in your body. And your mother's 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 put it there. It's just a time to awaken it. Because you really don't know yourselves. Don't think that I'm talking trash because I know something because I really don't. You know more. And that baby probably know more than all of us. Many of them is your own ancient mothers and fathers, whether you know it or not. Come again. Because spirit don't die can't. It's impossible. So when the Nazarene was teaching about everlasting life, he was talking metaphysically. 
you couldn't die if you wanted to. You're only transient. This is only a stage of development and nothing more. You're in school now, that's all. That's the truth, and that's what religion was supposed to teach you. Death is a friend of man, not an enemy. You just trans, you come and pass this way. There's a lot of other lessons, but go back into the books and you can see some other things. It'll reveal itself to you once you come honest to it, but you must come to it with an open heart. That's your great seal. The most important symbols in the secret societies that run this government, run, run this planet, and don't you think they ain't got this, because they do, is this Fez and that trinity that you know is the pyramid. And when you hear them talking about the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they lying. It's Mother, Father, Son. I repeat, Mother, Father, Son. And Mason means Mother and Son. Every man is a Mason because we're the son of a mother. That's why she's called a widow, because she has no husband. Because everything that came here came through her. You need to understand what is really being said to you. We're not looking for comfort. We're dealing with the truth. You got to understand what people who govern you already know. And even in people that's teaching you, those other religious principles know what I'm telling you right now. Because they get it, so they pay for these degrees and take a blood over death not to reveal the secrets because these institutions would collapse overnight if you knew the truth. And you'd be free. Know you the truth and the truth will set you free. That's why they murdered the Nazarene. That's why they ran Prophet Muhammad out of Mecca. Yeah, that's right. You understand what I'm saying? People following Paul, not the Nazarene. Now let's talk about this again. That's the mundane cross, that's what's on the top of this fez. This is the womb, geometrically formed. Mother gave it to the sons when it's our time to rule. All the people in secret societies know that there's over 46,000 years of written history in the Americas. It is your history, right here. How's that? That's why nobody's talking. Because what you thought you knew and what you believe is a farce. Don't mean there ain't no truth in it. Don't misunderstand me. You've been played. So in order for you to regain this lost estate, you're going to have to raise your octave. The cellular memory that all of you possess is going to have to be agitated to bring you to a level that you need to get to to honor your mothers and fathers because you have refused to do it. And since you refuse to do it, nature herself has taken over. So get ready, because you're going to catch hell even starting this year. You wait till September. Nova Drali told you all, you need each other. Now, you're going to need each other even more so after a while. Well, after a while is here. And the reason I'm telling you this so that you can understand that prophecy is made by mathematical numbers. So don't be impressed with what I said, because that's your capacity too. But the deal is that the rulers don't teach you those rules of science so that you can't do it for yourself, so you gotta keep on paying for their lunch money and paying for their trips to the Bahamas with Susie. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> the roof was leaking, the, you know, we was <coughs> doing our good stuff and the devil came and put a hole in the roof and everything. We got to raise the money because God house leaks. <laughs> and this might go around collecting, right? I said, just a minute, y'all. Got to give Jesus his half, you know, be right back, you know. Got to give God his half, you know. He talking to Susie. You understand what I'm saying? Huh? But I'm telling you the same knowledge, they got it. The same thing I'm telling you, they have it. Always did have it. You can't get a doctorate without knowing these things. 
You can't get a PhD without knowing these things. You can't get an LLD without knowing these things. You hear me? There's a meeting for the masses, and then there's a meeting for the classes, and you ain't invited. <laughs> Tonight, you're in the meeting of the classes. Do you understand? Now, let's talk about what's a dollar. Dollar is a gold and silver coin. I want to give you all a little bit more something else, too, so that people don't play on you. You know how when we celebrate and we fast, we actually it's a time for us actually to cleanse, et cetera, Ramadan. You know what we wait for? The movement of the moon. You know the 39th book? You know Esther? You know where Esther really is? Estarte, Isis. Aphrodite, Easter, did you know that? And you know what they wait for to celebrate Astarte? The movement of the moon. You know when they put the blood across the door of the children of Isis, Amen Ra, Elohim, Israel? Huh. Come on, let's deal with this. Pay close attention. They call that the Passover, don't they? You know what the Passover is? When the sun comes from the southern hemisphere of the planet Earth in the heavens, in the gate where Capricorn rules and crosses the celestial equator and rams the north gate where cancer resides, and impregnates the earth. They call that the Passover. They call it Easter. Quadragesimus from the ancient ones. That's your celebration. And it ain't the Europeans. He just adopted and gave it to other names. So don't get caught in this thing of throwing the baby out with the bathwater either. Because if you knew your history, you wouldn't say, that's the white man's religion. That's the white man's celebration. That's yours, and you're the white man. He's the Negro. So you got to be careful what you say because the word is God. I'm going to go to law and demonstrate to you what the whole world knows about you that you don't know about yourself. Free white people. Let me get my spectacles. This is law. This is what all judges know when you walk into a courtroom. This is what all lawyers know when you walk into a courtroom. This is what Bush and the boys know when you go before government and you so-called thinking you're voting. This is what heads of government know when they travel from nation to nation. This is what they don't want you to know so that you don't be free and you pay all the bills. Free white persons, listen carefully, take rough notes, and I'll make sure that you get this documented information later on. I do apologize because we tried to get some things printed up before we came, but you know how hectic it is. That's what happened, all right? However, I'm going to give you the information, and I challenge you to cross-reference and go to any law book, any law library. Those who know law always knew this. Do you know what happens when you call that European white man legally? You just called him the sovereign. You just gave him God authority, because that's exactly what it means. And then when he acts like it, you want to complain. <laughs> oh, he thinks he's God. Well, you just said it. <laughs> and the word is God, and you gave your sovereign power to him, gave up your birthright. So let's go to law. Look what all of them know. Here it is. You're not going to be able to write it all, but take it and absorb it in your head. Go to sleep on this. Free white persons. Henry Campbell Black's Law Dictionary, ancient and modern jurisprudence, modern and ancient terms of jurisprudence, principle of law, 
used by all scholars on the planet Earth, all doctors of law, PhDs, LLDs, BHDs, doctors of ecclesiastics, heads of government, master masons, eastern stars, Jesuits, Ku Klux Klan, Kyklos, Union Guard, White Camellia, everybody but you know who you are. Now you see why you catch hell and nobody else do? It ain't your complexion. I'm going to tell you also in law what color means that it's not going to make you too comfortable. Free white people. Free white persons refer to in the Naturalization Act as amended Act July 14th, 1870. Has meaning naturally given to it. This means connotative assumption by you. When it first used in Statute 103C3, meaning all persons belonging to European races, then commonly counted as white, and their descendants, including such descendants in other countries to which they have immigrated. Fact and law of what it means is free white persons means it includes all European Jews more or less intermixed with peoples of Celtic, Scandinavian, Teutonic, Iberian, Greek, and Slavic descent. It includes Magyars, Lops, Finns, and the Basque and Albanians. It includes the mixed Latin, Celtic, Iberian, and Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portugal. Free white people include the mixed Greek, Latin, Phoenicians, and North African inhabitants of Sicily, and the mixed Slav and Tartar inhabitants of South Russia. Free white people does not mean Caucasian race. Free white people does not mean Aryan race. Free white people does not mean Indo-European races, nor Syrians, nor the mixed Indo-European, Dravidian, Semitic, and Mongolian peoples who inhabit Persia. Syrians of Asiatic birth and descent will not be entitled to become naturalized citizens of the United States as being free white persons, ex parte Shahid DCC SC 205 S8. 12, 8, 13, and give you a whole litany of law cases so you can go cross-reference it. It's a status. Now you understand why the Knights of Columbus and Ku Klux Klan took that oath in 1854 and started calling themselves white people and took your birthright and then put their family names on you so they could put a bond against you? So that whatever you buy or sell with the mark or the number of that name is bonded by the state corporation, which is private entities and not the real country. And that's your bondage and not a chain. Do you hear what I said to you? That's why Noble Dwali came to teach you to be yourself and give you your birthright back so that you can have legal standing at law. It's called judicio standi. Do you understand? What you've been suffering that you've been calling racism is a diversion by agents placed amongst you, as well as your miseducation in schools. You know what the status of people who call themselves Negro, black, cult, and whatever it are this week is legally across the planet? It's called civil litter mortus. Let me go to the law book and show you. I need some water. I'm getting hot blood, so I'm coming out of it. All right. Now, I want to read this to you. Take notes. Get real. Because I'm telling you, we're going to bring it to you, but you're going to apply this knowledge. We're going to teach you later on how to apply it. When you go to court, when you deal with the IRS, when you deal with any claims made against you, any bonds, bail bonds, et cetera, when a judge adjudicates before you the court, this information is vital. Don't know it, your keisters are grass. Civil litter mortus. Pardon me? Yes, I'm going to give it to you in a minute because I, I had a, another page because I was getting ready to read color. I'm going to get that to you too. Civil litter. Can you all hear me? This is capital. Whenever you're dealing with law and legal terms, you capitalize. The first letters. And I'm going to give you some other keys. I know most of you are scientists, and the erudite of jurisprudence are already brought to this level. But I'm going to give it 
so that the common people can understand and break it down to you. So you can recognize when you're transacting business in the mail what's really being said to you in a minute. Civil liter mortus, it's C I V I L I T E R. You got that? Civil litter, one L. Civil litter, you know how you throw litter? That's what civil means civil, civilization. Litter means trash. Mortus. M O R T U U S, which is Moorish Latin for death or dead. You ever heard of mortuary? Huh? Huh? All right. Civil litter mortus is a legal term and phrase applied to people who honor not their mothers and their fathers. It's a legal term, but they didn't tell you that because they miseducated you. And if you'd known that, you would have done something to change it. So if not to tell you, you start arguing about racism, which is a diversion. Let me tell you the truth. There's only one race on the planet called Earth. The human race is that species. Hominidae is broken up into multiple extended families called nations and nationalities. Fail to have one, fail to be listed as a part of the human family, and you're outside of law or outlaw. Civil litter mortus. Do you understand? Do you understand? We're talking legal, lawful process so you don't deal with emotions that somebody don't like you. I'm telling you how you're being oppressed legally so that you can counter it yourself with intelligence and not with emotion because emotion only gets you beat up. All right? The people need knowledge and that's what we're dealing with. So let's deal with civil litter mortus. Civilly dead. Dead in the view of the law. The condition of one who has lost his civil rights and capacities and is accounted as dead in law. But how come the civil rights leader didn't tell you that that's what civil, that civil litter mortus applies to people who don't have civil rights? How come they didn't teach you that? But they got people going out getting themselves beat up for civil rights. You see the danger of a lack of knowledge? But the people gave these people all kinds of honor. And it was actually the blind leading the blind. And the whole world knows this but you. Now do you understand why other nationalities come from around the planet and can make economic impact in your communities and you can't figure out and they don't pay certain taxes and, and they can get buildings that you've been walking past since you was going to school and you can't figure out what's happening? It's because they are full life citizens of the planet. And you are civil litter de uh, 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 trash, really. You know, we're civilly dead because you won't honor your mothers and fathers. Do you see any Asiatics come from around the world talking about, I'm a light-skinned yellow guy? Where's the light-skinned yellow rights organization? <laughs> no, let's, let's get real. I, you need, I'm setting these scenarios so you can understand law because it's important for you to understand law because you've got to get back to the law. If you don't get back to the law, you can't be saved. Full life is the legal term that's opposite of civil litter mortus. So let's go to full life. And it spells just like you hear it. Two separate words capitalized full life. And I'm going to show you again what they know. All scholars know this. All the professors in college knows this. All the politicians talking about they want to get you a vote and they're going to change things for you know this, but they won't tell you this because you don't need them suckers. They're leeches. You need to honor your mothers and your fathers. Now, all of you. These are an important part of your library. They're standard that your mothers and fathers had before you fell to slavery. Because Moors always pushed philology around the planet. 
Philology was always key to Moorish culture. That's why they burned your books, to artificially create the illiteracy that you're suffering from today. All right? So let's look at full life. Those are standards. And clear water, good light. And you meditate. And you never study anything. Never send your children to any books without those books on the table. And you teach the children at a young age, don't go past a word you do not understand and assume not that you understand it. And just because you heard it don't mean you understand it because I'm going to give you the key of the word of God in a minute, the edamon. Keep me on that, but I'm walking you through the paces because I want you to absorb this so it will be useful to you. I don't want you to say, oh, that sounds good, the brother sounds good. I want you to use this when you go out into the world so you can help yourself, so you can change your condition to the better, no matter who you're dealing with, so you can talk to the president just like you talk to the janitor of the school because you're the government, but you need to know that. And you can't be in the status that you're in. You ready, you all? Full life. Life in fact and in law. The opposite of civil litter mortus. So a person that's not battling for civil rights and civil liberty, liberties by law across this planet is categorized as one in full life. How come they didn't tell you that? Since they want to argue about civil rights all daggone time, why don't they tell you what you're fighting for? Why don't you know the disciplines and these subject matters that people keep taking you in your life for and you've never read what these things are? Going out on blind faith getting people beat up, thrown in jail, and don't even know they're not even dealing with law. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? You need knowledge. And you're here tonight to get some, and we're going to give it. Excuse me, i got to come out my gear. Hold this. Yes. Mm. Minority, we're going to go into that. And we're going to go into color. Write these words down. Color. Color of law. Color of authority. Color of office. Colorable. Colorable. These things are important. The reason I'm telling you these is because all of this involves you and when you're doing contracts understand this is the status that pre-exists unless you're nationalized now like say for instance you're um you're russian as an example and so i'm coming to russia right as a citizen from another part of the planet the first rule is that i study the constitution so that i do not violate the laws of your house and when I come there, you're looking for my constitution so that you know by which law I'm to be governed. Do you understand? If you accept me as a juristic citizen for some period of time, I cannot be what you call an organic citizen, but I can be a juristic citizen. That means by political agreement and contract, you can give me some privileges of a citizenship. That's called naturalization. Are you hearing me? naturalization to reclaim or to redeem a people that are lost from their own nation or mother it's called nationalization you, 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 are you clear I'm making a distinction an alien who's being brought into government can be nationalized naturalized pardon me the legitimate organic people who have not been themselves and have not honored their mothers and fathers who are being brought back into constitutional fold of government are nationalized because they're not alien to the land. Do you understand? Naturalized means you're an alien to the land. 
Nationalized means you're indigenous and aboriginal to the land. It's a status issue, and the law applies differently. So you better know the difference between that. No, you understand? You follow me. And this is with you when you're making contracts, and particularly with those of you that might run into the Uniform Commercial Codes and get happy because somebody sold you a package. Some of the rights that they're selling you already belong with you. It's called inalienable. You know what inalienable rights are? Raise your hands, please. Inalienable. That's dangerous. I'm saying this to you. That's dangerous because I saw only a few hands because it demonstrates that the masses of you have been, are being, and will be taken advantage of politically. How many of you think that IRS is part of the United States government? Huh? Well, how come you keep paying them? That's just a question. Just a question. No, it's just a question. It's just a question. It's just a question. IRS is a private corporation of European families who have inherited bonds from servitude in the North Gate that you call North America. It's a corporation that was created to collect nigger peas. It's a private corporation that's registered in Puerto Rico. Not here. Registered in Puerto Rico. The European families created that to collect their nigger fees so that the niggers who think they niggers this week don't know that slavery didn't end, it was bureaucratized. And you're bonded. And you're not listed as human beings, you're listed as chattel property, wards of the state, or state ward, state property. That's, again, why they put their European family names on you, Smith, Jones, and Johnson. And don't think they ain't got bonds on it, because they do. That's why when you buy a house that you don't own it, you thought you paid for it, and then they tax you out of it, because it don't belong to you. A deed does not mean ownership. A lodial title means ownership. A lodial title. I'm just giving you some information that's not going to be given to you generally because it's not supposed to have gotten to you. You're not supposed to know this. Because property can't own property. And there's a distinction between real estate and real property. Are you following me? You need to understand this is what your status is for real, what they're not telling you. And you be thinking they're prejudiced. They be dealing with law. Now you understand why they don't, they don't have to be mad. You say, you know, this guy, you know, because like, you know, like when I was young, you know, they wouldn't even speak to my father. You know, but now I can walk out and they talk to us and now everything's better because they smile at me. You know why they can smile at you? Because the municipality's got bonds on you. Now you understand what municipal bonds are? They don't have to smile at you. They're getting paid. They can work on the same job that you work on live in a suburb and you can't hardly keep your phone bill on. And you want the house done. You hear me? You experience it, but you don't know how it's done. That's why I'm explaining to you how it's done. So you don't have to figure it out. It ain't prejudice. It's legal processing. How many of you did state agents say to you, and you know, sis, brother, you know, because what I want to tell you that you want to be blessed with this sister, and I want you to come up here and so I can just join y'all together in God's holy matrimony. <laughs> How many of you know that police powers is the governing force behind marriage certificates? Only police powers. How many of y'all knew that? How many of you knew that? 
That marriage license comes absolutely in totality, absolutely in all aspects under police powers. Ain't got nothing to do with God. How many of you knew that? Well, you better do some research. Because that's what you did. You just sold yourself. And they own your babies at that point because they own the womb. They can come 59, 11 o'clock in the morning, kick the door down and take their babies out without a court order because it's state property. Do you hear me? They have jurisdictional powers because you bought that certificate. It's a violation of divine law. However, it is corporate law for chattel property. In case you didn't know, I just want to throw that at you. Same thing with the birth certificate. Did you know that? Do you understand? Let's talk about licenses. Licenses are permits given by a sovereign power through officers of duties and imposts dealing with issues of imported goods of the prince in the harbor or bringing in from another jurisdictional power to charge them for a benefit for operating in a corporate capacity, in principle not applying to the natural person, citizen of the land, but only to foreign corporations operating and receiving a benefit in a corporate capacity. And that's what a license is. It's a tax on imposts. Did you know that? Now, all right, we're going to cut in five minutes so we can eat. When they told you to get a license, it didn't apply to you. It actually applies to corporations. But when you got it, you sold your birthright to the private corporate state, and they sold your rights back to you that already exist with you under a privilege, and they gained jurisdiction in an area of your life that government has no lawful power. Did you know that? Now, for some of you who got that folder that we sent out, you will see, and I say for you to copy it and share it with your friends, there are 12 Supreme Court cases that show you the truth of your rights that the lawyers won't tell you, and that cops won't tell you, and that these politicians keep telling you what they're going to do for your neighborhood. See, the deal of it is they understand the principle of energy. How do you kill a river? You dam it up, don't you? Make sure it don't flow. You kill the life in it. The principle is to stop your families from being able to support yourself. That's how they destroy you with a license. Looks innocent, doesn't it? Because they control your movement. And he who controls the movement contro controls your economy. They make you think the economy is the fiat, and the economy actually is energy. And you looked at as a battery. That's the truth. They deal with it mathematically, just like you deal with volume electronics. You turn the volume of radio up and down, that's how the economy is working. It's done with mathematical numbers because you're not allowed to have money. That's why you can't take that fiat note and go to a bank and redeem it for the lawful money, which is silver and gold coin only. I'm going to read Constitution and prove to you that you don't get paid. And also, I want you all to pay attention to this also for the children. And don't allow them to keep calling what they have money. You call it what they are, Federal Reserve notes. They are notes of debt. They are absolutely zero. That's why the deficit keeps going on and bigger. Now, you all, Constitution for the Republic, United States. I want to show you one key, excuse me. And then Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution for this Republic. Do you know why the politicians keep telling you this democracy thing? Because they know as soon as they say that and you don't put them in check, you just gave up your birthright. Do you hear me? Because as soon as you didn't object, that's called abandonment, a waiver. At that point, they can operate with you under a color of law because you didn't object, because even a little child can read the fundamental law of the land, and you got adults 
they got the mentality of minors and don't know that this is a republic. Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution for the Republic of the United States, North America. Section 4, the United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion and on application of the legislature or of the executive when the legislature cannot be convened against domestic violence. When you do not check the politicians that are running around telling you about our great democracy, you don't know that he just stole your birthright. Your first duty as a citizen of the land, being organic, etc., is to say you're in violation of the law. You took your oath on that constitution. You're operating on the color of law. Now, you can retract that right now, or I'm going to get with the citizens, file a petition, and get you out of office, because you're a traitor. Because only government here, and even across this hemisphere, can operate under Republican form, which means the people are the government. They've been doing what they want to do because they have you serving them. And you agreed that this is a democracy because you didn't object. Now let's go to Constitution Article 1, Section 8. This is, um, I'm going to go to Section 9. Now, when, I'm going to tell you about money real quick, but I'm going to stay short. The dollar is yakumthara, which is silver and gold coins. It is nothing else. So don't call that what you have a dollar, because when you do it, they charge you with agreeing to that contract. All right. Give me one minute. I'm going to read this. It's time right now. But I'm going to read this before we go. And hold this in your mind. No bill of attainder or ex post facto law shall be passed. No capitation or other direct tax shall be laid unless in proportion to the consensus uh, or enumeration herein before di uh, directed by, uh, to be taken. No tax or duty shall be laid on articles exported from any state. True preference or no preference shall be given to any regulation of commerce or revenue to the ports of one state over those of another. Nor shall vessels bound to or from one state be obliged to either clear or pay duties to another. And no money shall be drawn from the Treasury but in consequence of appro uh, appro appropriations for me made by law. That means it must come through law. All right? And a regular statement and account of receipts and no expenditures of all public monies shall be published from time to time. And, pardon me, and expenditures of all public monies shall be published from time to time. No title of, of nobility shall be granted by the United States, and no person holding any office or private or trust under them shall without the consent of the Congress accept any present emolument, office, or title of any kind whatsoever from any king, prince, foreign state. Note 10, no state shall enter in any treaty, alliance, or confederation. State don't have jurisdiction in those matters. Grant letters of mark or reprisal, coin money, or emit bills of credit. So if you're going to state court and they suing you for credit, they never had the authority to admit bills of credit, nor allow any banks to do it. See what your argument is? See what your argument is? Do you need another piece of paper to back this up? And they all took their oath on this? All right. So now, now, and they can't admit bills of credit, and they can't make anything but gold or silver coin a tender and payment of debts. So if you paid any bills without a gold or silver coin, you're not paid anything and they're holding against you. That's how they've been garnishing your wages. Because you're never credited with having paid any bills. They tricked you. They're stealing your birthright. But that's how you argue contracts. So you're going to study the construction of contracts. Do you understand that, you all? And we can talk about some other things later. Right now we're going to break and you all get some food. Peace. Okay. Of discovery. Now let's talk about how to deal with these persons, including the Internal Revenue Service, which is a private corporation. Listen carefully. For any subordinate jurisdiction to have any lawful authority in government, they have what is known universally as a delegation of authority order, which is known, abbreviate, 
as D-O-A-O. -O. Command in that writ for them to present it in written form with reference numbers to the branch of government to prove that claim jurisdiction before you give them any other information. Other deal, don't sign anything that you don't sign next to your name, all rights reserved. Standard. Whatever you've been doing in the past, forget it. For the neophytes, all rights reserved. For those a little more sophisticated, UCC 1-207, and it's at now 308, UCC 1-103, and you can put abbreviations T period, D period, C period, which means threat, duress, and coercion, then they can't use the straw man against you because now when they challenge you, you can dissolve that contract. Hmm? Threat, duress, and coercion, you just initial it. That's what invalidates a contract that is imposed upon you because they're using state powers to say that you can't get a job unless you sign this. You can't get a job unless you have a social security. You can't get a job unless you give them this information and then you sign a piece of paper. That's in contract law. That's constitutional protections. And keep this in mind. All judges, all government officials take their oath to uphold the constitution of this republic, not the UCCs. Do not transact business with them without having that in your possession. Never go to a courtroom without having the oath that judges take, including the prosecutors. You understand? If a lawyer comes to you and the judge says to you that we're going to give you this lawyer, the first thing you ask that lawyer is where's your license to practice law in the United States Republic? Produce it for the record and enter it into the record, and I want to see where, what that portfolio you got. I want to see where the Republic's Constitution is. And if you don't have it, fire them immediately. You understand what I'm saying? And the judge talks trash, tell, ask him, is he practicing law from the bench, which is a violation? Now he must recuse himself. You just disrobed him. Do you understand? These are your rights, not privileges. But if you don't know yourself, you don't have them. And if you're not in appropriate persona, you don't have it. This is why it's important to nationalize. You don't need a whole bunch of paperwork to retrieve. You can't buy your sovereignty. It comes to you at birth. They're called birthrights. So you need to learn the truth about your nationality and birthright because your nationality establishes your status. Do you understand? Yes. Your birthright is the claim that's made on the planet that all legitimate government must recognize. And the Constitution is a multi-layered international venue. Article 3, Section 1 and 2. It's an international venue. That's not just here. You need to know this. And when people get caught up in the paper trail of trying to buy sovereignty, they should know right then that something's amiss because you can't sell the birthright, nor can you sell the function of it. Now let me hit you real clear. This is for many people in here that may have had economic problems and dealing in contracts, find themselves stuck in contracts. Great Seal is the ancient government on the planet Earth, symbolized by that great pyramid that you see, that nobody speaks under, that you see on the back of that note I told you to pull out earlier. I want to you remind you of is a preposition. That's the part of speech it is. That means it's a, sus a substantive, and it attaches to two sides of that seal. One side is silent. Somebody got amnesia. The European sons who've been governing the North Gate territories, who are master masons, raised by the Moabites, brought into the constitutional fold of government because our last past discretions, because we had them in servitude first. That's another part of your history you need to know. Do you understand? This is why we established the United States of America, to get rid of that karmic debt. Deal is they took over and then hid your history. That's what the great Masonic secret really is when they say the Great Seal. When you say the Great Seal, you're talking about the sovereign government, not only of this land, but of the entire planet Earth. That's why every person in every secret society, including Illuminati, got that pyramid with the eye at the top of it, except you, to whom it actually belongs. 
And then you're looking for somebody else's permission to be yourself. Your concepts is all wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So the command of a bill of particulars is the rightful way to challenge the jurisdiction of a court to create an estoppel by the nature of its existence. And so when you present that, lawfully they can't move unless you waive your right. Do you understand? Now, waive it is to let them go into the jurisdiction without objecting and stopping them and say, establish your status. I'm Moorish, indigenous aboriginal to the land, representative of principles, but presenting myself as a natural being, not corporate, not 14th Amendment, nor 15th Amendment, artificial person, citizen, that you created that is of artificiality. You all must know that lawfully there are two types of person on this planet. Person does not mean your flesh and blood. So when they say a person must, a person must, it does not mean what you think it means. It means the corporation must. And when you refer to yourself from now on, say natural person. And if a legal document comes before you and says a person must and you submit to it, you just said that you're a corporation and then they tax you according to a corporation. That's how the IRS fools you. They got a contract now and they enforce the contract because the contract makes the law. But what you must say to them through your delegation of authority order through your writ that you're commanding of them is prove that they had the authority to coin the money and prove that the states had the authority to admit credit and prove that that fiat is money. As an example, you get a mortgage and you write and you uh, start signing your name to documents and you see an instrument with a dollar sign, right? And you sign your name to it. Nobody else signs the name to that. Then you give you another do document and have numbers but not a dollar sign. And they sign that one. So they said they gave you money, but on the other document, they're preserving themselves protecting themselves. They gave you nothing. But now they want a pound of flesh. And they transferred their debt on you and then used that thing that you signed as a negotiable instrument under bondage. And you own nothing. Do you understand? So that's your argument is a fraud. And understand this, the nature of contracts. So what you're going to do when you get in your organized bodies of order, the civic organizations within this territory and across this country must learn the principle of contract, covenant, agreement, treaty, constitutions. If you violate those principles, you cannot operate in any society as a free national being. Do you understand that? Don't take it personal. And don't get caught up with, I belong to this club, I belong to this. This is universal. This has been held back from you. This is why you're getting screwed. People who know this got a package to sell you when actually certain parts that they're selling you already belong to you. Now when you go out into the world and you transact business with these contracts, you just created a straw man where the straw man was already killed by Noble Dr. Ali since 1913 that half of you ain't listened to because you thought it was just a belief. And then some of the leadership told you it was a belief. No, it's your birthright. You need to know the distinction. As an example, say for instance, if the baby says to me, I'm Afro-American because my mom said so, legally, in the world, what she says, I have the jurisdictional powers of three continents. Now, a Kibalon that they call Africa now has 54 different nation states in it. They have 54 different national seals, 54 different national constitutions, having a harmony of isonomy principles that harmonize with the nations of the earth around the planet by which they can come to a table and negotiate by treaty or international law on commerce and gold and silver interchange in agriculture on law principles that are common to the mind of man being the common law of the planet. For you to be on that forum, you cannot be Negro, black, and color because no nation of people exists. It's a fraud. Do you understand? Nations make law to be recognized by the nations of the earth to collect what you would call a benefit of rights of citizens on an international forum, you must be of a nation. Fail to declare it. And you are state property, ward of the state. Let me go to the law book real quick because this is going to answer a lot of your questions because we can't get all of them, but I'm going to answer all these questions and see that they get back to them. Now let's look at wardship. 
I want you to understand is when you hear the term ward of the state, this is going to answer a lot of questions for you. And I'm saying this to you because it's more important for you to understand what nationality is and why you better do it. And you better do it soon, too, because this thing getting ready to collapse. And the people who should have been telling you about this, if they're going to have to do this more often than they've done. And I give honor and credit to the Grand Governor for having a TV show and starting telling the Moors what the Moors movement is about properly. Because too long there has not been any public communication. And the people just thought this was just a belief system. It's actually your birthright. And everybody on this planet knows it. And without it, you can't operate in society. You can't. Your property until you fix this thing. But you can't fix what you don't understand. So it's their responsibility to tell you the truth. That's why we're here telling you the truth. How you handle it is on you. But you've been told. So when this stuff starts collapsing, because believe me, anything you save, they're going to steal it. Anything you got in pensions, chalk it up. You understand? Anything you got in stock, you think you got something? You think you got something now. Chalk it up. You ain't going to have nothing. They stealing it all. What ain't, they ain't stealing this time, they're going to steal the next time. Don't believe me. You keep on hanging on and see what happens. Ward. Wardship in chivalry, an incident to the tenure of night service. Wardship in copy holes. The Lord is guardian, brother. It's for the brother right here. Wards of admiralty, seamen are sometimes thus designated because in the view of their general importance and rashness, and though they are not technically incapable of contracting, their contracts are treated like those of fiduciaries and beneficiaries, and if there is any inequity in terms or any disproportion in the bargain of any sacrifice of rights, the seamen to which they are not com compensated by extraordinary benefits. Basically, what is this? The courts, and you need to understand history, the reason why the Europeans put their family names on these Asiatics on this planet and then told them that they was Afro-Americans, Negroes, black, and colored because they stole your birthright. You thought it was just a historical glitch. You buy and sell in the mark in the name of another nation, and all benefit goes to that nation because the pedigree, the inheritance, the birthright is in the name. Don't think that it ain't. And so when you go up and start trying to talk about your rights, and you're going to tell Joe Smith about your rights, and you Joe Smith, that's a fraud all over the planet, no matter how many generations you use it. That's, what, that's why Nodrali in 1914, 1913 A.D., set up the old Canaanite temple to begin the process of the political, social, and spiritual redemption of these people, to return of the birthright. Now, most of us were told that we were Choctaw, Chickasaw, Seminole, or Cherokee, etc., Blackfoot. Those, the, the five civilized tribes, actually is Ali, Il, Bay, Day, and Al. Those are codes. Now, so my family is Cherokee, Blackfoot, and some Chickasaw, but they're just territorial. That doesn't mean, and we in Indians. Let me tell you how you became in this, because this is very important, because this is going to answer a lot of your questions. I told you earlier about the Mauryan dynasty, the Nanda dynasty, the Gupta dynasty in, in uh, Hindustan, in ancient Peru. The people that you call Indians that come from North Asia. Those are Moors, Canaanites, Hittites, blend, all right? Lawfully, they're Moors too. Do you understand? They just won't say it to you because we like to fight people and like to talk about colored people and they're not going to let you steal their birthright because you've given up yours. And we like to burn stuff so they, it's kind of hard for them to reason with us. Because oh, we don't deal with facts, we only deal with the beliefs. The rest of the civilized world deals with mathematics. They deal with science. We deal with beliefs. The rest of the world deals with economy, gold, silver, commerce, mathematics, dealing with astronomy, astrology, how the universe works. We deal with beliefs. They have it all, we got nothing. Because we don't understand that that's for children. And we're threatened because we think that we're, uh, how do you say, cursing God if we're not believers. But that's for children. You're supposed to know by now when you're an adult. But somebody cheated you, you didn't know it because you didn't have the information. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? 
Now, when you have the information, those rights are claimed by you, but, but it can only be claimed by a natural person who's in propria persona su jurors. You must honor your mothers and fathers that your days may be longer upon this earth land which the Lord thy God Allah has given thee. Honor not your mothers and fathers and ain't no rights that you have to talk about. This is what happened to Dred Scott in 1854 to 1857 in that mind-boggling Dred Scott slave case, which is the most important slave case ever to come before the world governments on the planet by which uh, citizenship is measured this planet over. He failed in his bid to claim slavery is not because of the Missouri Compromise, it's because he claimed to be Dred Scott. It's his status. Scott can be traced to England, and he's not an Englishman. It's a fraud. Fraud has no statute of limitation, no matter how many generations. So if you buy and sell with the mark or the number of that man's name, he got you. You got it, and that's why you nationalize. But when you nationalize and you do contracts and preserve your rights, you don't need to go get some paperwork to preserve your property. You need to enforce the Constitution, which is what Noble Drawley said for you to do. So if you, if you said Dred Scott L, and they cut the L off and said you still don't come out of control of your own But if you said that, that also means that you have some knowledge. Right. See, you don't just say it. You must demonstrate it which means you must know the distinction of what nationality means. That's why Drew Ali said, Moors, come, all ye Asiatics of North America, and hear the truth, which means it's something that you didn't know that you thought you knew about your nationality and birthright. He was talking to you political. But if you didn't recognize that this movement was divine and national, I mean it got two pillars. It's not one-sided, it's not just religion, it's divine and national. And if you don't deal with national principle, you can't receive your divine rights as citizens. That's universal. But people thought it was just this little club. And guess how impacting it is across this planet? It is the key that runs governments. That's what's been held back from you. That's why we keep getting screwed. And we call on the rest of the world prejudice and they laughing at you. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? As an example, I'm a contractor, I'm a carpenter. When I go take care of business, now I'm a house doctor, right? Come here for a minute, I want you to see this. You see this card? It says house doctor, right? Yeah. See that number there? Yeah. Now see here, status? Yeah. And you see there it says status, I-C-E? Yeah. Well they wrote status, I-T-E, I-C-E on the documents, and they transferred the Constitution and the treaty numbers that's registered in Washington, D.C., AA222141, and gave their own number. So when I go in there and buy materials, like if I'm doing your kitchen, and I go in there and I buy 2,000 notes worth of, 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 of property, of product, they write the taxes off. The people standing in line think they're writing the taxes off because they think I'm a contractor. They write them off because of my status. And that belongs to every one of you. Every one of you. And you don't have to be a contractor. So if you don't know the law, you can't exercise it. Do you understand what I'm saying? If I see a car on a lot, what's in the window is what I pay. And it ain't being paid then because of my status. That's what Noble Drawley brought to you. Unfortunately, many people got this information didn't tell you that because it tells you too much, because they can't control you then. But if they fulfilled the prophet's program, they would keep the people. Let me give you another deal. This is the temple structure. The temple. The school. The industrial complex. The press for literature and newspapers. Civic class for enforcing the Constitution, teaching constitutional principles so that people can learn to be better citizens, and communication arms of counsel for international relations so you can take your places amongst affairs of men. That's the temple structure, but I know that's not what you see. That's what Hoover did to undermine that. However, it's not that that's not unknown. And one of the paperworks I wanted to show you earlier and we didn't get a chance to print was just that, that I did particularly for a lesson that I did for my babies in, 90, in 82, 
And I used to te do lessons for my children so that they would not get confused about the corruption that they were running into and lose interest, because I knew they would. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Because Noble Drawley set this thing up to be all-encompassing to make a place for everyone so that you wouldn't have to send your children to this man's school and then come in conflict. You see what I'm saying? And so what happens is you have a lot of Moors meaning well that accuse the people of not being interested in Noble Drawley's program when they're not really presenting his program. They're just presenting the temple. And so the people see these people just in the temple, and then some of them are singing church songs. No, let's, let's be real. And they're saying nationality and birthright, then they're not giving them no national instruction. And then the people go out in their nigger lines playing tickets tomorrow. Do, do you want? And they ain't supposed to. They're supposed to bring that judge to the floor. Uh, excuse me. You got a contract? He says, you know, brother, because what you was doing, you had your left sneak tied up and you was going around the corner like this, and that's why they stopped you. Know, and she, oh, excuse me. A ticket is a suit. Did you know that? And that a ticket is not valid unless it has attached to it a sworn affidavit according to our, uh, Amendment 4 by a witness claiming that they see, saw you commit a crime. And if it's not that ticket or that summons in, invalid, you can tell that judge, uh, judge, uh, excuse me, this instrument doesn't have attached to it a sworn affidavit. Uh, I think you should tear that up. We have rights as a free national being. You must confess your nationality because it sets up your status and your identity. If an Italian comes to me right now and says, well, brother, what I want to let you know is that my name is Linguini. And you say, what's your identity? Linguini. Do you take him serious? Yeah. Chinese come to you, brother says, so I'm a light-skinned, egg foo young guy. Is it? Is it on? All right. Now, when he says that, he's declaring a national name that can be traced to another nation. That can be traced to another nation. Do you understand? At that time, no rights reside with that being. And any state corporation has jurisdiction over him under what is known as stateless person. Write that down. That's a legal term. And this is the same thing that they're doing, brother. And this, I'm telling you these principles because if you understand these principles, you won't be needing to go buy packages. Because that's this is Great Seal, because I'm the mirror of Great Seal. Open up. Open up. Hit, hit me again. They are suits. And your issue with the delegation of authority or writ in the nature of discovery is to command the court to produce the evidence and the indictment. Without an indictment, they can't prosecute the ticket because it's an accusation of a crime under quasi-criminal court. Quasi means colored, and colored means fraud. We're going to end in 15 minutes, you all. But I'm going to remind anyone, anyone has questions, write them on these papers that they give them, and I'm going to take them with me when I go back to Philadelphia and New York, and I'm going to mail them back to respond. But also, I'm going to be sending up information so that you all in your individual activities and groups can incorporate some of this information because it's universal, so that you can be more powerful in the, in, in the instru instruments, uh, pardon me, instruments and the activities that you're already doing. But connect with the Moore Science Temple of America so you can get your foundation and then learn these principles so you can understand what nationality really is, the power that's actually behind it that has not been used enough. How do we get that nationality? How do we connect with it? How do we connect with it? They, they, you can ask any of the, uh, the sisters and the brothers here. As a matter of fact, they're coming on TV now, which makes it good, and you'll be able to call them, which is great. And see, the deal of it is when your consciousness raises, it makes the people in leadership have to step to the next level. They're going to have to deal with these things because th this world is changing. The economy is changing. And this stuff is falling apart at the seams. And we're not going to be able to give you testimonial type stuff. Allah loves you, praise Allah. We're going to have to tell you how this stuff really works. Because guess what? If you get screwed, we get screwed. Because unless we help you, you are our brother and we are our brother's keeper. Because we ain't getting this birthright by ourselves. 
Yes, it does. What, see, the Uniform Commercial Codes operates this way. All, all industry, all government, everything, even crimes are all commercial. You understand that? Uniform Commercial Codes work in the sense that you preserve your rights in contract, but you don't start making contracts unless you're first a national because now you're stepping in waters of interfering with the internal affairs of sovereign governments and you're claiming them to come to law and treaty and constitution because any uniform commercial code document must be litigated in a common law court, i.e. a de jure national court. Therefore, if you don't understand constitutional principles and have not done those things in your life to enforce constitutional principles, you're missing. And so when you get there, they're going to beat your keisters up. They will give a few of you a few wins because they figure now you done learned a little bit. But you got to understand, they've had control of your laws to state. And that you, when you start talking about sovereignty, you're talking about nationhood and birthright. And if you don't know intrinsically, in nuance, what it actually means, you will trap yourself and get into their jurisdiction. Not because the paper says it because you're going to save yourself as soon as the challenge is made because you want to slip up with your language why you got to change your language and this is also why we're teaching the edamon so that people can understand the mother of words god words and i'm telling you this for real too yes the edamon is the root word E T Y M O N. All right. Real quick, you all. Yes. Now listen, uh, because so many people have been going to North Carolina, and that's another reason I'm here. Years ago, I went and did a TV show at Time Warner down in Carolina. I went down there because. A brother named Kadar was dealing great seal documents, paperwork, and misrepresenting it. I was elected to the mayor in the um, tri-state election in 92. All great seal really means, and you must understand this, and a lot of people don't understand this, all great seal means, as far as the association is concerned, are Moors who have risen to the adept level and are active and not passive who have learned those things to enforce law in order to save themselves in the political arena and are enforcing the Constitution as declared by Noble Drali in the divine warning to the nations. Such Moors are known as Great Seal Moors. They're not a separate group. They're simply Moors that raise it another octave. They're not better than anyone else and they're not smarter than anyone else. So don't get confused because people will try to divide you against each other. I'm telling you because I'm the mayor. Now, this brother was raping these people, giving them documents, and these people was paying thousands, sometimes hundreds, for these documents that are supposed to come from your dues. Meaning that when you're a member, if you're sending a document to IRS, et cetera, what it costs to come out of that paper, and you know, that color sheet comes out of that thing, it costs what, 50 cents? Well, that's what a document costs. And from your dues, and if you're in good standing, and even if you're active, not out in the temple, because usually you won't be in a temple simply because you've graduated, meaning that you're dealing with another level. But you suppose at the same time still support a temple and send people to the temple. But the world is waking up. No, the people are waking up with their eyes open now. The temples are going to be forced to step up the game because now the common people are on the PhD level. We made sure that happened. And so once you put information out there, you can't take that back. Once somebody's wake, you can't make them dumb again. So the leadership's got to step up and raise the bar. Because once the bar's raised, they ain't going back. Yes, and what that does, that locks them up. This is what it does. But you don't move off of that. Because when they have to produce that delegation of authority order, that's when you discover that they're not really government, because they don't have it. Because the democracy is not the de jure government. The republic is. But the republic is sleep. Do you, do you, do you hear what I just said?
that at that time, what did you just do? That's why you've got to recognize right. At the time that they cannot produce a delegation of authority order, they cannot fulfill their claim. It is void. At that time, they have no legitimate bond. Judge dismiss. They continued in its color, isn't it? Yes. Now, when you have sent in all your documentation relative to your nationality, we ain't talking about this other stuff. Now, you have what? Exhausted that state's court, which is in violation of the Supreme Court, and now you got a Supreme Court case. Now, if you're national and you're an organized body, you got a class action suit, and as soon as you do it, it's going to cost them thousands of notes to even litigate, as an example. Some of you in the Carolina area, when Nature Eel Bay got stopped in Asbury Park, Grand Street Nature, uh, no license type thing, took his vehicle, the whole thing. And if you looked at that, that case in Philadelphia, because I delivered some of the papers there, and you see in, in, in the, in the uh, footnotes where Minister Todd Tariq Bay, where their, their lawyers were fighting us, we initiated a writ of removal to a proper court of jurisdiction. Knowing we couldn't win, one of the strategies that I used was to file the case in Philadelphia. Although by procedure, you file the case in the territory where the tort took place. But they were blocking him in Jersey. Now by procedure, we couldn't win that, but the point that I did was to get it a docket number so that you all could learn from it. Do you understand? This is what happens. We sued Asbury Park, Wall Township, New Jersey, Police Department, the towing company. They called, the towing company's lawyers called him trying to make all kinds of deals. Give him his vehicle back, give him a $1,000 notes, you know. And his lawyers say, well, take him off the suit. And he said, no, because we wasn't really doing it for that. We were doing it for the people, even though there's a sacrifice. And we knew that some of the people wouldn't understand. They had to get two big law firms up in Pennsylvania fighting these two little brothers. It cost them tons of money. Then they dismissed the case, right? And guess what their lawyers charged? B12, B1, B12, yeah, diversity. The very issue, that's before the court, two different nations. But that's what, so that you could see it for those who know law, to prove that they know that you're indigenous to the land. Some people not understanding the dynamics saying, oh, well, the guys didn't win the case. That's not the purpose. Huh? All right, we're going to have to go in a few minutes. But at, at the point of it is, is that all of the tickets and stuff that he had in Asbury Park, uh, um, Grand Sheikah's Nika, and he went around there you know, to deal with these other things, because they had a whole bunch of other stuff, court cases, supposed to go. all that stuff disappeared. It disappeared. They didn't allow us to win the case, but all the claims disappeared. That should, yeah, that's exactly correct. But the deal is, you're supposed to tell that judge, because you want this paper trail, you want the records. That's why you always say, for the record. The prosecutor failed to prove his claim, or to make his claim. It is your obligation to dismiss. Okay. Now, if the judge continues, he's practicing law from the bench, now he's liable also. Always, you know that. And, these, and, 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 and the reason I'm saying these things is so a lot of people don't think they need a bunch of documents to get this position. Because ultimately, any contract that you make has to be litigated once it's challenged in a common law court. So if you enforce the Constitution, you don't need any documents. You just need to be national. So now you can set that judge in order. Now, I want you, I want that prosecutor to produce your nationality card and prove that you're a citizen of the United States. And the United States is a corporation, isn't it? It's not a nation, is it? United States is a political metaphor. It's about five United States of America in the Western Hemisphere. Once you understand that, you're claiming the land. Noble Dali gave it to you. Morse American, you got a nationality card, mine for yours. Introduce it into the record. And if you can't produce it, you got no claim. That's the same, oh, now with Amir. I apologize. 
I went down there, did the TV show, um, and told Anua and others that had a whole body of people. We went on TV and this was his sister that was doing um, a show. Her show was called Feed My Sheep. And there was another show that came on before her was airing. And so we was in the lobby at Time Warner waiting for her show to come on. So I went down there with the rudder and sextant, brother, brother, with the rudder and sextant, structure of government, great seal, constitutional principle, seven documents that deal with the fundamental distribution or transacting business with corporates to let them know that you're not Negro, black, and colored, and you have a free national name which sets your status up. Those documents would come from your dues. And with, with the whole process, even with mailing to Washington, D.C., was about 32 notes. Do you understand? See the dirt that has become out of this? We got to cut because we got to go. Queen. The land patent, you own the land. Let me put it this way. The land patent is also a contract because it's a contract under fees, under fiefdom. Now, this is what happens. When the grand body of the grand, the grand body present the Moore Science Temple as it should be, it's actually a government, it, it really is, a council, and it even has an in-house co divine constitution to show you the pattern. When you nationalize, one of the great lessons that for all you to learn right now is go look at that great president when he made that statement before the United Nations. And that great American president is Hugo Chavez. Now, do you understand? When, if you study that, you'll understand what I'm telling you now. If you would just declare your nationality, come in organized body, you don't need a patent for what's already yours. You need the people to nationalize and take all of the gold, silver, and commerce back because the gold, the silver, the commerce belong to the citizens and the citizens alone. You don't need them, the temples of the embassy. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to yes, we are. But I'm saying to you, 